want to participate in a Don and Mike show contest? How about this? You or a member of your household can only win once for 60 days. You must comply with any age limitations for each contest. For complete contest rules, send a self address stamp envelope to the mighty WJFK, P.O. Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thank you, and God bless. Everybody loves Don and Mike. I'm Larry of the Corner. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hold on. We... Hello. Hi, there. Mike, are you on now? Hold on. Mike. Is he on? Or Mike he... O'Mara. Oh, he... Now, don't do with me. Hello. All of the Mike. Oh, you? Yeah, I'm Larry. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, was, that, was that funny? Larry, was that funny? No. No. <laughs> yeah. I'll no, beat you. <laughs> don't beat me, Larry. It was funny. Uh, no, hold uh, on. Make up your mind. It hurt. It, didn't, it wasn't meant to hurt. Doctor life. Come on, say, Larry. Larry, listen, I want to say something to Mike. You were not born. You were made in a toy factory. <laughs> you can say that again. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. That's funny. Uh, Who are you? I'm Larry. No, no, no. Come on. You're not just Larry. I'm Larry of the corner. Ah, right. I'm Larry of the corner. And that thing with Sandy Koufax made up, right? Probably, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, That's probably. my favorite answer right there. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> Since the, uh, gosh, 20 hours we've been on the air, yeah. what's the one thing you've been thinking about more than anything else? A oh boy. <laughs> a boy, Larry. Larry. But other than a boy. I would rather do Saddam Hussein, but who would? You can't argue with Larry. No, you can. Larry. <laughs> Larry. I'm Larry of the corner. He's Larry of the corner. Oh, hold on a second. Let me uh... make a call right now. And, uh... I read the obituaries every day. Look at the ages of the people that died. Hi, uh, uh, B.A., may we speak to Joe, please? Yeah, one second. Hello? Joe, I'm Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Guest of, guest of the Don and Mike show, stay at the Helix. No. Guest of the Don and Mike show, stay at the Hotel Helix in the center of D.C. Nothing is more important than you at the Hotel Helix. You are a celebrity. You are a star. The Hotel Helix at hotelhelix.com. Joe. Thanks. Good read, Joe. Thanks, pal. Perfect. Bye-bye. Yeah, Mike. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I have we ever had a guest that stayed at a hotel? We will be. We will? We will. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. All right. Shouldn't he say something about having a can of beer at the end of that? <laughs> no. Now you're getting his jobs mixed up. We're moving now into the area of uh, where we have guests that come into town to be on this show and stay at a luxury hotel. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to applaud that. That's right. I think cool. that's fantastic. Uh, oh, and let me just say... Hello. Oh. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's late as, August. <laughs> as the temptations say, I got sunshine on a Tuesday. It's Michael Scott Shattered. And hi, everyone. I'm Milburn Drysdale, president of the Commerce Bank. And is the Commerce Bank or the Commerce Bank and Loan? Bank. bank of Beverly Hills. The Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. You'd think I'd know it by now, but who cares? It's still all about money. My script is the same. I am a square-jawed DJ with many, many plastic surgeries to my credit. And there's no doubt about the fact that I love Granny. <laughs> and I have but one groaner for you today. Only one? It's a generic one. A generic counter will fire away, Mr. Shannon. What legendary country singer always wears a sweater? Chili Nelson. Chili Nelson. Hey now. Hey now. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Right, we are. And hi, Julia. Based on a true story, he was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy, himself, a man of faith, a man of hate, and a soul torn apart. You were discretion advised. And good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Immense in Thought and all the ships at sea. Yeah. They've decided not to leave each other. John Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. We got high. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening, Don and Mike Show. New episode on this Tuesday. 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 082404. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Mm, thank you, Buzz.
Rob, if you would be so kind as to move that microphone so I can see Buzz with his drawn-on uh, beard. Okay. Or as I like to call this day... Here you go. Inspection Day. Uh, Don and Mike <laughs> show new episode on this uh, Tuesday. I got my car inspected. Ah. It's August 24th. If you were late on that. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I, he, it was tough to understand what the guy was saying, but he was saying something like, I was so late that they could have said, Yeah, right. You're too late. Is that... Didn't Joe tell you that? What? Joe came. Uh... No, Joe, I think somebody in the parking lot saw it oh. and observed it and passed it along to Joe. Uh, Joe uh, said. Or was he... Joe the one that was the hip guy? No, no, Joe. Joe... Oh, no. Uh, hi, can we talk to Joe again, please? Yeah. Joe said to me, uh... Hey, hi, Joe. Hi. Hey, it's Joe, everybody. Joe, I'm Joe. Joe said to me, I don't know, how long, was it two weeks ago? Uh, you're down there uh, smoking a cigarette and just staring at the cars. And Joe said to me, hey, Don, you realize your license tags have expired. You're missing the sticker. And Mike, he doesn't have his inspection well, done. My inspection was late. And do you know that Joe, uh, yes, I went out the very next day and found that sticker and put it on my car the very next day. And so did I the very next month. <laughs> <laughs> the next month. Did you? Did you? Uh, here's my question. Did you tell Mike the same bit of news that you told me? Y yeah, yeah, I think you did, right, Joe? What news? That Mike's inspection sticker had... Uh... Joe, try to pay attention to the conversation. Uh -huh. Hey, he told him. Okay. Just looking out for my favorite radio personalities. That's good. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. What I didn't know, because it's been so long since... Bye, I... Joe. Bye. 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 Since I've gotten an inspection, it's been so long. I didn't realize there's like a guy that puts on a monocle and it has like big high boots... And just folds his arms and walks around the car, just going, hmm. That's the inspector. I don't think that's, that's the inspector, and then he uh -huh. sends me on my way. He had a riding crop and everything. And he said, I don't think you went to the right place. And then they said, are you, no, they said before they did it, they said, are you ready for the inspection? <laughs> <laughs> they said, bring out, <laughs> bring out the inspector. <laughs> and uh, the inspector came out and Hi. viewed the car. Hi. Sent me on my way. Hello. Hi, Hi. this is Wolfram Juretze. That's who it was. From Germany. From Germany, he was. Never forget mm -hmm. the Don and Mike show. Right on. But he put my sticker in crooked. They do that. Mm. Yeah. I the, told the, you, I've lived through a year of that, and I want to thank my guys at the Exxon. They're the coolest with lining it up and making sure that the blue sticker is next to the yellow sticker. Mm, they're the best. This particular gas station I went to, I think, may have been a front or some sort of other activities. Well, Mike, call the authorities. I, I'm like all those mm -hmm. signs on the on the highway now saying, uh, see anything suspicious? Right. Call whatever the tip line is. Call that number. A lot going, a lot of driving going around, a lot of in and out of uh, with different cars and different people and lots of sunglasses <laughs> and eating of foods that seem to be from far away. Oh, <laughs> like out of like, counters? Like that's not everywhere <laughs> in America. <laughs> out of Tupperware. Yeah, uh, oh. Some sort of food... Food stuff might appear to be from I, mountainous regions of Afghanistan. Go through this radio station and you'd, you'd find much the same. Yeah, just at the front desk. And more. That's right. <laughs> Anytime. The worst thing that ever happened to me with a sticker is the one that you have to put on yourself, the county sticker. Yes. I was putting it on in the wintertime and I had the defroster on. Mm. And as I went to go back there, the blower yeah. blew it up to the top <laughs> and it stuck flat yeah. right in the dead center of my windshield. Yeah, did, you you leave, did you leave? You had to leave it there, right? Well, no, I scraped it, destroyed it, and went and got another one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, dollar. I've lived, a, I've lived a year with the horror of not having those two uh, stickers, your county sticker, your inspection sticker, right next to each other. And those guys... I can't my, find my county sticker. And my ex... <laughs> you shouldn't be saying this on the radio. <laughs> no, I have it. It's, it's in my office. You shouldn't be saying this on the radio. Okay. Just, right. I'm just telling you. Oh, cuff me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Someone just pulled up Mike. outside. Mike. <laughs> You're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Well, it's all about uh, paying your taxes. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yes, but you have to have the sticker in your car. I know. And well, you, 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 you are like a, you, in turbo anal when it comes to your vehicle. You could eat off your car. I'm not as I'm not quite the no, same as you are. Mike, it has nothing to do with. And you're right. I do like my car to be clean. You, you get out of your car, and on the way in, you always stop to a little. <gasps> You know, and take the elbow. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. I listen. I learned my lesson. John Q. Law. I'm here for you. If I gotta have that blue sticker on my oh, car, I am too. On the license plate. I mean, I had it on the license plate the next day, and it was killing me that I was driving around without it. Right. So, right. You know, don't think that. Well, but the other, the sticker I got today is far more significant than the other sticker. 
It is. <laughs> I don't know. That's the inspection he, sticker. That's he, the inspection he, sticker. Because the other thing. sticker I have, I won't give you the dates that it had on it, but the other dates, that's driving around with an thing. invite. That's like saying, wait, because there are a lot of cars that don't have, that, that are new cars, newer cars, that don't have the county sticker yet. You can't. You can drive a car off a lot, and if you don't, if you have a brand new car, uh, I understand see. that. But if you have the dates, which which the old inspection sticker, that's an invitation. Are you driving around right now with a sticker that's expired? No. Oh, okay. Then no problem. No, no. We're talking about the two. The two. I don't have the other one. You see, I have one sticker that says my my inspection sticker. That's what I have. On. So you don't have your county sticker. Yes, but I but I know that I have paid my taxes, and that was uh, that. That's the issue, and I will get the the other. Oh, but don't do you not agree that the inspection, the dated inspection sticker? Here's all I know. Far more of a, here's all I know. An alert to John Law. Mm -hmm. Well, well, now that I'm talking about it, I'm probably in terrible trouble. That's I mean, John Law's probably. I probably won't make it home this evening. John Law's probably. And I know friends of mine in the in the, you know with the proper authorities that right now are hearing this are probably going to just drop by. That's why um, I was just uh, you know ixnay on that. On saying that you don't have Officer them. Harris will probably come by and you know with his motorcycle and be out there, you know, dangling his cuffs. <laughs> if I go out to my car, <laughs> you don't have to I'm just asking me. for it. What am I doing here? I know it's trying to help you. You don't stop mine. Don't say don't say that you don't have the stickers and then don't say. Well, I do. Well, I've got the one. This was all prepared. One. This is prepared yeah. comedy. <laughs> I wrote this on my way in today. I penned this little sketch. Brilliant. <laughs> Good. So never mind. I was going to ask, is your wind is your windshield in on the bit? However, when Joe alerted you, when Joe alerted you, you had, I think, in order in order of priority, you had the most dangerous mistake by not having your current tag. Yeah, because that would be number one. Because that's when they look at the license. That's they pull you over for that right away. They don't always catch the sticker in the window, but they sure catch if you've got expired tags. But also, so really, um, on, the, on the scale of things, mine was a lesser event. But if you mine was on, mine was only two days late. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was a month late. And the safety inspection mm -hmm. is really for your own safety. <laughs> <Right>. Shut up. <laughs> Sit in the corner. <laughs> you just, Robbie, just shut up. Shut up. You're not helping Wait. the situation. All right, I'm not going to get into the whole thing. I was thinking though. Okay, why? What? 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 Because I'll make people mad. What are you thinking? The, the fact that this state is is very similar to like certain Soviet bloc countries. <laughs> yeah, the state of Virginia. Oh let's, my God! Let's not start it because there's other states that are similar. Well, I'm sure there are. It's just yeah. I mean you have to have you know I mean everything. I know you got to have all your stickers. Yeah. You just have to do all this, time. do that, do that. Right. Pay, right. pay the money. Right. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. See. Say hi, John. Yeah, not, hi I, there. I've got a like-minded individual here. I, I drove around on dead tags for six months. <laughs> they were so dead they weren't even in the system anymore. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Everybody's confessing that. That's cool. Welcome to Don and Mike's Confessional. That was John Norman, incidentally. <laughs> Thanks for giving his name, Mike. <laughs> and here's Joe Ardinger again. Joe, Virginia is not a state; it's a commonwealth. Oh, a com That's right. So that has a lot to do with the politics of the state. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Isn't it nice when Joe comes in with an intellectual fact? Sure. As he's like slowly picking the chicken out of his teeth. Like he's in here playing Jeopardy or something. Right. Joe just in from the House of Burgesses <laughs> to let us know. <laughs> with his Holy powdered me. wig on. My lord, my ladies. <laughs> Bully. 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 I come with news from six blocks yonder. <laughs> I should tell you that Virginia is not a state, it is a commonwealth. <laughs> where's, that, where's that bell, Robbie? Where's that? Order. Order! Order! The distinguished gentleman from the state of Virginia would like to inform the other gentleman who moved from the great state of Maryland that Virginia is indeed a commonwealth. Order! It would be... Order! Order! Forget it! I'm halfway home! Let the dude from the Labor Party speak! Hey, Mike! It's the commonwealth! Forget it, it's halfway expired. <laughs> Ardens, you're here. I just, you know, I felt that way today, and I feel that way occasionally. The, 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 yeah, you know, the president by the just, man. Well, no, it's just there's a lot. I mean, everybody's watching you. Yeah. We all do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. They're they're all watching us. Um, I want to ask something here about watching. Have you, now, have you been polite with me about my lip today? Uh, today, I, today, I, it was not a factor. What about yesterday? I was polite with you yesterday. Were you polite with me yesterday or today about my lip? Frankly, I didn't even notice. Rob? I just noticed it today. I okay. didn't see it yesterday. Uh, thank you. At first, I'd like to announce... Wait, hold on a second. What? It is, it, 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 Rob? What? You didn't see it yesterday? I swear I didn't. Nor did I. 
Mike, no, here's why I bring it up. Okay, I'm out. We no, 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 Mike, it. hold on. No. See, we used to... They, these, today, I don't, I didn't, today, it wasn't a factor. Yesterday, no. you know... These, these guys are not just kissing my ass. Yesterday, it, it hadn't started to scab over yet. Yeah, I could what I not tell you blood. that yesterday... Well, today was... All right. Today, and not I, only my today I accepted it, but yesterday I was, and yesterday was the last day. My lip and my chin, both. I got, I got, and I'll tell you what happened. Yesterday here. was the last day I was going to bring that up. Oh, because I had the whole free to think. You were having up. a day. I wasn't going to yeah. pile on. Well, listen, there's a lot of brave people out there. I want to say I have herpes. I have herpes, <laughs> and. <laughs> There's no better time or place to say this. I have herpes. I'm a carrier. Kiss me. I'm a carrier. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I have ki I've kissed all of the items that you've touched. Ew! Uh, you got the creeping crud, honey? I do. Just on the lips and nowhere else, right? Well, well is it simplex? It might get complex. <laughs> um... And thank you for yesterday for not bringing it to my attention. Because normally... Well, no, I mean, I knew you were aware of it. Nor, yeah, yeah. You and, were looking at it. And, and today, yeah. you know, of, of all things, Shondell, who I, oh, I've mentioned is, is lovely. just lovely. <laughs> Very lovely. You know, uh, lovely in a... Uh, let me just say, she's a lovely flower in an otherwise right. dying garden. <laughs> Striking, really. <laughs> she works here at the station. Anyway, she... Uh, yeah, well, I'm hoping they do some fall planting. She came She came by and she said... Something like, oh, you, you, you really seem to be happier. You seem to be in a good, because I had indicated, uh, you know, I'm really enjoying work. And the whole time that she was having this discussion with me, I knew she was just staring at my lip. Mm -hmm. I knew it. And yeah, maybe like, not. No, no, I'm positive, Buzz, because she looked, and then I did that thing where I kind of put my, my mouth like this, like, yeah. How you doing, Sean Dell? Mm. Well, I mean, well, she didn't notice where you were looking. What do you got? I'm Anita Horba. <laughs> Fuck melanoma. <laughs> Only Russell's wart. No, now I'll tell you what that's, happened. That's the wrong tape. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. Um, I enjoy uh, getting on the treadmill, right? And, and you know, we've all talked about our battle with the bulge, right? And, right. and I'm down now to the, the two fifteen. I'd like to get down to two hundred, but right. at one time I was like two eighty. So I feel good, and yeah. I run every day on the treadmill. Would you and, mind before you go on with that? Would you mind telling us what your name is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. My name is Don Geronimo. <laughs> Joke's not so funny now, Mike. Let me just say, ouch! It's on your lip, though. Well, that's the only place you can see it. It's on many lips. <laughs> Oh, God. My real name is Mike Source. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, no, so, um, I was not, I was not even hoping to, to have to bring this up on the air. Right. I, I enjoy the getting on the treadmill and, and mm -hmm. doing my running. And when right. I run, I run with the iPod and I get the music and mm -hmm. you get in that groove. And for me, that's the only way that I can actually get off my big fat ass and exercise. That's something, I'm going to take that suggestion. And what I do is I run and I run and I try to run three miles a day. Now, a lot of you... You don't watch TV when you're running? No, just music. Just the music. Okay. Just the iPod does it. And what happened was, because I am just a retarded klutz, I was running, and now I'm not running at a, at a great speed, like at 5.3. You know, for those of you on the treadmill, 5.3 miles an hour, it's enough. You're going like this, but you're not driving yourself crazy. Anyway, th whatever the song was that came on, oh, I know it. It was Everlasting Love by U2. How long do you go at 5.3? Oh. Uh, I don't know, 20 minutes. And then I just you, you don't, like, do a minute on, minute off? And no. That's steady 5.3? Yeah, and then... That's you, a good job. Yeah. Then you slow down a little bit, then you do it again. All right. uh, I usually do a minute on, minute off. That's great. So anyway, I'm doing this thing, and the song comes on, and it's right at the time when I'm, I'm just... <laughs> I was going to say, it's a minute on five, and then a minute lying down. <laughs> <laughs> so this song comes on, and... I'm so into it right. that what I do is I'm running it's like everlasting love. Yeah. Ever, I shut my eyes and oh. everlasting. And the next thing I'm I'm not kidding you. I'm tumbling off the goddamn treadmill and crack the left side of my face against the corner of the wall because the treadmill is backed almost into a corner. Right. There's just enough room on the left side and the right side to mount it, as it were. Oh, you mean so you, you just smashed your lip? Yeah, what happened? It's not herpes? No, it's not. Oh. Oh. Well, it's not funny anymore, then. 
the mic. It's just <laughs> it's just a cover story <laughs> because <laughs> falling part. because my name's Don Geronimo. <laughs> Well, no. Let me tell you how I can tell. It, now that I'm looking at it, yeah. Well, it's not like a little thing. It's like a big, like scrape. No, it's a it's a gash. It's mm -hmm. it's an open gash, right, in my upper lip, my upper right lip. And then you sure you're not creating a cover story for the cover story? Yeah, right. Are you sure that my no, name? Perhaps that, that. I'm a friend of Michael Mara's. <laughs> Okay. So what I was suggesting was that maybe over the weekend, you know. Oh, with Frida? Yes. That they, maybe it, uh, during the weekend, yeah. he, he gave you like one, one strong right hand. Yeah. You know. yeah. If that happened, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have had yesterday's discussion. <laughs> we would not. I'll take a lot, Mike. Right. But I. But the day she hits me, yeah. that'll be the day that I leave her. <laughs> the day that my wife. Thank you, Rob. Are you experiencing any pain with that lip? Um. No, I'm just uh, conscious of it, but and so I split my lip open, and then also my chin. Uh, can you see right up in there? Yeah, down here yeah. a little bit, and also cut my cut myself down here. Right, quite a tumble. Anyway, the world's greatest athlete. That's what happened. And uh, thanks for not bringing it up yesterday. I wanted to bout uh, Frida. Hold on, here's somebody who did the same thing. Always make me feel better when there's a stupid person just like me. John. Yes, John. John? In the, in the middle of a Nautilus, crowded people, lots of people, closed my eyes. Different song, same results. Mm. <laughs> well, at least mine was in my basement. I wasn't Yeah, but I didn't have herpes. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine if you did it in a health club, that would be highly embarrassing. That yeah. would be bad. Uh, do let me tell you about the, uh, the, the greatest thrill ride of all time. Mm -hmm. You must be this tall to ride uh and it is now closed the the mood swing has officially closed it oh the mood swing is back to normal yes. to ride them. all seems back to normal all of a sudden you don't like your house don't you buzz yeah <laughs> I do. someday perhaps buzz would like to tell you i know that buzz has told me off the air that the, the one that I have apparently is a low level one. Oh, really? That, that they yeah. sell bigger and better ones. They're bigger music. Are, I know Rob's got one. Yeah, it's called the Matterhorn. <laughs> Come mild, on by. Mild rides and wild rides. There you go. That's fantastic. <laughs> I think everybody said everybody at one time or another has one in their house. <laughs> so anyway, things are back to normal. And one of the things that uh, uh, my wife uh, I moved into a new house that doesn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I better stop. Right. One of the things that she had been on my ass about was moving furniture. Uh -huh. And now I'm not opposed to the to the physical labor. I'm not a fan of it, uh, but I'm not opposed to it. Uh, yeah. And what we want to do is move uh what she wants to do is move furniture from an upstairs bedroom to a basement bedroom. Oh, I this guy this is, well, that, now this is what we were going to do. We were going to get a guy. As a matter of fact, I got the best guy. Well, we already got a guy. Because oh, I have a good guy, though. Because Frida called Carrie, and Carrie's got a guy. That's Rob's wife, and mm -hmm. you know they did those lines of warning. So, so anyway, it went from us having a guy that was going to come over and move this stuff to when she was mad at me over the weekend. She said, "Well, why don't you just move that furniture yourself?" Mm -hmm. And I went and and went to the bedroom and, and saw. I have no idea how to properly take. This bed apart, this gigantic right. uh, bed, which is uh, it's got the, the the box spring and the mattress are 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 kind of attached to the actual bed frame itself. At least the bottom part of the bed, it's it's all in there together. So it's not like a, a frame; it's like an actual piece of furniture right. that holds. It's a, it's an old-fashioned design. So I'm okay. looking at this thing, although it's modern. And let me tell you, Rob, we we've been paying about modern dollars for it. So I'm looking at this thing, and I, and I said to her, once we got past all of the, the problems over the weekend, she said, well, let's, why don't we together try to move the, this furniture? Mm, okay. And I said... I mean, I'm just I'm hearing this after the weekend you had. Yeah. Moving furniture with, with your wife. I mean, even I remember, that's a dangerous thing to do. Yeah. This, it ended up, I think, being funny. She, okay. She's not mad. <laughs> <laughs> what happened is, we get this... We get this giant, big ass mattress box spring. Looks like a box that Lincoln was buried in. This <laughs> this thing that we finally managed to push on its side, uh -huh. and without getting real technical about where I live, the house I live in, it's hard to explain. Are we going downstairs or upstairs? Going downstairs. All right. There's a lot of narrow doors, uh -huh. and there are narrow hallways, and the way that they originally got 
this piece of furniture up into the upper part of the house was they actually brought like a mini crane inside mm -hmm. and lifted it up through and then slid it through the with the stairwell. double windows in there. Uh, no, it's right oh, through, you, the you mean through the stairwell. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, I said to her, "This is what these guys did," and she said, uh, "You know, we can get, just just do it." So we started to move it, and <laughs> and it looked like it was going to get stuck. And right. then she said to me, "Here's what I want you to do: get behind this thing." I pretend like it's a blocking slide. And what I want you to do is put your weight into it. Come on now, Mr. Workout. Oh, my God. Put your weight into this thing. I want you to push this thing. Mm -hmm. Now, wait till I say go, and then just push. So, okay, one, two, three, go. And I go, and the thing moves about six inches because it's so jammed in to the door frame. It's too big mm -hmm. to get out. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they got it in this room to begin with. And while it's moving, it's six inches. And meanwhile, I'm back there pushing as hard as I can. I hear... <laughs> and she says, stop, stop. So we stop. We look up the entire ceiling. It's got a like an eight inch strip wow. <laughs> where it where it's just caked it's it just it's just, a gash. It's a big gash carved right into the drywall. And and as you enter the bedroom, at one point there was a light switch on the wall. Right. <laughs> the light switch was just broken clean off and the face plate was also broken clean off oh my so now there there's just a hole in the wall you're with, destroying your house with wires coming through and here's the best part once once we decided that oh we better stop mm -hmm. we can't move it back it's jammed in the door it's stuck oh my god so now <laughs> so now if you come to my house to get, if you go upstairs to get to my bedroom or or, or the, our our bedroom or the or our bathroom, you have to go through <laughs> another bedroom and through a bathroom and then through another door and walk around th through the computer room because there's this. Did you try banging it low so it could maybe diagonal the thing? A um, bit? Here's how we left it. Okay. Uh, we left it that maybe the movers should just figure it out. And the movie. You don't think they broke it down and, and constructed it? Again. Oh, I'm sure they did. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm quite sure they did. And I, I pointed out to Frida, this is this is why I'm not your handyman type. Yeah. yeah. You know that I I am not good at. Stuff. I don't have a lot of guys, but if you ever need a good guy, I got a great guy. I'm not I'm not good at stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And all I know is that when she said push as hard as you could, I pushed as hard as I heard. Yeah. Could. I heard the scraping, and the next thing you know, there's a big gash in the ceiling, and, and suddenly we need an electrician now, too, because we're missing a light switch. Right. And now the, now this big, gigantic half-bed, half-mattress, half-coffin is just stuck. It's just stuck. stuck and, and my wife is uh, at work today, and... Uh, my when buddy the, Stevie would help you out. He would. He sounds like... Uh, oh, who's that? Who's that has been comedian? The the New York Tim guy. Allen guy we went to see. I got a mental block. Andrew Dice Clay. So that's exactly what he sounds like. He's like, hey, uh, you'll be happy to have you. And I, I, when he was moving, he did the same thing with me. Moved a room, and I came out. I said, now what I want to do is, uh, Mikey, Mikey, <laughs> with all due respect, shut the f up. <laughs> and uh, you know, and then in like ten uh, minutes, he had like done. eight guys, and that's and they finished it. So if you ever need the guy, you no, like they'll be coming on Thursday. They're coming on Thursday. <laughs> And and as I left uh, for work today, the uh, the gypsies arrived, mm -hmm. the the cleaning ladies, ah. the, uh, the the wonderful. <laughs> do you hear the bells on the cart when they? Uh... Yeah, you do, and all the donkeys are in the front yard. They're and, very yeah, they're making fire down there, and wonderful. And, and they have and all their cookware on the homemade outside. chipotle sauce and, and monkey, some yeah. kind of like a hobo barbecue. Oh, wonderful! It's just terrific. They just come in from the woods on the outside of town, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> right on the woods right outside Mayberry. Right. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> The door opens up, and I hear, hola, hola, and I say, you know, hola, you know, good morning, I'm in here, you know, Mrs. Fried is at work today, Any, anything you need, let me know, and and normally these uh, these women, these gypsies, they're great, uh -huh. they, they they clean, and they're fabulous, and, and I hear from upstairs, uh, Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike, <laughs> so, you know, I, I go upstairs, I say, uh, yes, and she says, the bed. Because now she's now for the first time. Yeah, seeing the, they're she's shocked. Like, she says, "How did the bed get here?" <laughs> I did. And I, I said, 
Frida and I pushed it there. Right. And then this is the funniest thing. I swear to God, this this woman who speaks very little English, mm -hmm. very sweet woman, and uh -huh. she has to be. She cleans my underpants. Was there any desire to break the bed up and use it for firewood? She's, she said to me, she said, why don't you push it back? You push back. Push, push back. I said, can't push back. It's it's stuck. And I'm trying to talk to this woman who uh, is, is in my house twice a week for the last five years, looking just wonderful in her 4th of July uh, Stars and Stripes t-shirt, and she can't grasp the fact that I'm trying right. to tell her that it's stuck. I'm not able to put it into words. Mm -hmm. Right. So finally I just had to go over and I pushed and I said, see, stuck. And she said, uh, but you uh, go to, um, if you, and she's doing the, the visual with her hand saying, right. yeah, go around to the other room, make, make, make your way to the other room, push, push from the other side. I said, uh, well, I, I tried that. And then she said, I help. Right. I help. Now, listen. Oh, no. listen. And it was out of the doorway in, in like six seconds. No, no. This girl weighs, maybe, this woman weighs maybe like 85 pounds. <laughs> oh. So... I put her in the position that Frida put me in, right. and, I, and I said, okay, you ready? Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Hey. Okay. Hey. Here we go. You ready? <laughs> One, two, three. And nothing. Okay. Absolutely uh, nothing. I thought she might have held the bass. Absolutely. Right. And then I hear from the other side, and I don't know even if it's Honduran or what, but I just hear... <laughs> she was cursing the bed. No, I think she was finally realizing that this was really going to screw up her day. Yeah. Right. That, like, yeah. to, to get to the washing machine yeah. oh, wow. and everything that she's... Because, you know, the, the big dumb family got the uh, got the bed stuck there. <laughs> but uh, things are great at home, I'll good. just say, as opposed to yesterday. Oh, hell, if you're tackling household projects. Things mm. are uh, things are good. And uh, Frida's shown no signs of the uh, herpetic scars yet. Yeah. But that's a good thing. That's sometimes good. it doesn't show. And... Sometimes it doesn't, Buzz, but <laughs> sometimes it does. And, and Mike, thank, I want to thank you for not bringing uh, that up yesterday when you could have. Well, that would have been a hassle. <laughs> like, it would have been a hassle if you brought it up eight or nine times. Yeah. Uh -huh. But two but times a day. Two, time, two not, times. Not, a no day. hassle there. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> I got absolutely no hassle. <laughs> Hold on a second. Um, thank. There you go. I'm Larry of the Corner. There he is. Now, I have, to, I have to tell you that uh, what I need is a copy, Robbie, yes. of all of these things for my computer. Because the game that I want to play with friends, we, I, I can't, we can't do it on the radio. I can only do it with people here at the station. Like, let me, and it helps if they're not listening. So let's, let's yeah, Alan. Yeah, Alan. That's oh. usually a guarantee that he's oh, not I listening. I bet, he's not even in, I bet he's not even in town, though. No, he's here. Oh, is he really? <laughs> he's your not listening go-to guy. Okay, here we go. Come on, Alan, be there. Because I want to talk to Larry. Alan. Hello. 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 I'm Larry of the corner. Hey, Larry. <laughs> How are you? Um, okay. Good. Everything good with you? And uh, I read the obituaries every day. Look at the ages of the people that died. Nope. That's good. I think I look better now. I know I think I feel better now. How's your wife? You know, I, I, I often ponder this. What is too much? I don't know. Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, how's the family? I got some few chest pains. First chest pains I've had in 10 years. Sorry to hear that. Me and the wife and the two kids. Got a beautiful family. A boy. Mm-hmm. A boy. A boy? A boy. Okay. I'm lying in bed. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. No contest. <laughs> hey, Larry, I got to go. No. <laughs> what do you mean, No. I don't know. That's my three words. I don't know. Oh, I thought you said no. Probably yes. You just said no. No. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. You too. I'm Larry of the corner. All right, Larry. <laughs> you know, I, I, I often ponder this. What is too much? That's a good question. I never thought of that. I want to see it all. <laughs> What, what do you want to say? 
I would rather do Saddam Hussein, but who would? Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, Larry, anything else? New York. My hometown, New York. New York, great city. New York. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Larry. Uh, I still at times, right before I fall asleep, wonder if I'm going to get up. <laughs> That's not too funny. That hurt. Fact of life. Yes, it is. I pinch myself more. I can't. Whoever thought I'd get. <laughs> okay, Larry. <laughs> Okay, let's do it this way. Okay, let's do it this way. Go ahead. Let's you were not born, you were made in the toy factory. <laughs> you were not born, you were made in the toy factory. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> it was funny. Okay. <laughs> okay what, Larry? Um, I got some few chest pains. First chest pains I've had in ten years. Better call a doctor. I'm the oldest person in a lot of places now. <laughs> this universe has been around a long time, and it's going to be around a long time. And I'm here for a blip of it. You've been around a long time, Larry. The nature of the beast. Yes, it is. Basically, my style is one of utter... It's almost... Uh, I don't want to say naivety. I'm curious... What are you curious about? The only thing I worry about is dying. I'm curious. I want to know why. Well, it'd be nice to live forever, I guess, huh? I like this, the climate. I like the people. I like the entertainment world. Mm -hmm. All right, Larry, listen. Have a good rest of the day. You know, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. No, I'm serious. Unbelievable. I know. Good luck. You, good luck to you, too. Good luck. Good luck to you, too. You want to hang out? Come on. Forget it. Forget about it. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh, he's gone. Hello? Oh! I'm lying in bed. <laughs> I don't need to know that. What me out the most is how fat I was. We'll hang up. This is Alan. We'll hang up. Yeah, that would be rude. Uh-huh. I'm listening, Larry. I'm all ears. <laughs> you were not born. You were made in the toy factory. Well, that's, that's a possibility. I've been told worse. Which we can play Michael here. Jackson tonight. I want to see it all. Hey, Larry. Okay. Listen, it's, it's going to sound like I'm hanging up on you, but I'm not. Hello. Okay, Larry? It's going to sound that. Oh. Hey! hey. <laughs> Poor old Alan. That was great because he was busy. Yeah, that was good. We, we, were, we were keeping him yeah, from things. That was funny. Okay. Yeah, that was good, Larry. Was we'll, we'll be right back here. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of my spread, huh? Can you believe it? They used to test H-bombs on this beautiful piece of property. <laughs> Eddie, uh, don't you worry about radiation? All I know, Clark, is that my teeth have never been whiter and my garden is spreading out 50-pound tomatoes. <laughs> the Don and Mike Show. Oh, my God. It's Don and Mike. Hey, stand by for James the Intern. Right. Uh, it's Apprentice... On Apprentice. It's going to be great. We've got uh, some guy who was in the uh, final four of The Apprentice. Anyway, NBC is up our skirts about promoting uh, The Apprentice on DVD. Ah. So that we can get the new apprentices on when the new show starts. I know. So anyway, today it'll be an exciting way to talk to this guy who, you know, frankly, I have nothing to say to. Mm. Uh, I hear that he was uh, one of the more popular cats. On uh, on The Apprentice. That would be that Donald Trump show. Right? That's it. Anyway, his name is Nick, <laughs> and he'll be talked to by our apprentice, James the Intern. And he of the uh, studly, all the girls love him, right? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and uh, still wearing the yellow wristband, yeah. which I believe means he's into... Bestiality. Uh, no, it's a, it means hug. No, I think it means something else, Buzz. I think it means what that color indicates. Mm-hmm. I think. Oh, you're uh, right. That's what I think it means. Sports. It's nothing to do with animals. <laughs> well, it can, Mike. Sports. Yeah. Water sports. <laughs> Water sports with animals. And his collar's still way up in the air. Yes. Yeah, he, uh, uh, he's getting that look down. He's the he's too cool for school, wearing his polo shirt with the collar turned up. That looked I heard they had a party when they had that party upstairs. He walked into the party, you know, just like he was walking onto a yacht. <laughs> well, he's, he's so vain. Um, he thought that song was about Here's the... Uh, <laughs> Here's the thing about the the Olympics. First, I still don't care. I still don't care. However, if you want some information, I, the only we're winning. The only Again, information we're, we're need. winning. Good is is uh, that the United States softball team has uh, has really broken some barriers down, and the barriers that uh, you know that these softball players are all kind of big, thick, ugly women. There are some hotties on the softball team and they won the gold medal there are and there are some dogs but there are like five or six really yeah really cute girls. including like the star pitcher who is like a model wow. and uh more people were kicked out uh what is it it's uh it's uh one of those things they say go uh, the uh, steroids steroids right. but there's more than that there's the uh andrio whatever the uh, andro, andro. andro. Yeah, anyway short. performance enhancing substitute let's see who are supplements kick, a bunch of weightlifters they kicked it, kicked out today and so. androsterone so if you care that is uh that's an, i think it's more important it's just where your little finger <laughs> i think it's more important Oh, I saw the funniest thing on TV. On one of those things where, uh, this is why I watch everything all the time. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of some newscast from, not even from the Washington area, I'm not right. sure what city it was I was watching. Mm-hmm. I'm so gifted with the cable and, and the satellite and everything. Right. If, I, I'm lucky that I get mm-hmm. all these channels. So, it, it, they were just getting done with the morning part of the news. And they said, and, you know, it's like human interest thing. There's the new tallest man in the world, and they show this dude who looks, I mean, like, you know that guy that was in My Giant? Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. which when, you, when you did that voice, made me think of that. Right. This guy dwarfs him. He is The Princess eight. Bride, you mean, Andre yeah. the Giant? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This guy, or, or no, uh, George Murasan was the guy from the movie My Giant, the right, tall guy. Giant. And then there was another guy in Big Fish. Yeah, another big tall. That was a really. <laughs> this guy. This guy is eight seven. E. Wow. And has grown in the last year. <laughs> shoe size, twenty five. They asked this guy, and they showed him out in his front yard, and it's just. I mean, it's sideshow funny because right. he's like. Picking apples out of trees. Let me get that for you. Yeah, <laughs> trees, trees are gigantic. Is he American? They said to, no, of course. He's like from the Ukraine or something. <laughs> right. They said to him, uh, "What's the biggest problem?" And he said through a translator, "The fact that his fingers are so big that there is no cell phone." That he is able to use. Wow! Yeah, I can so see that. He needs like one of those. I, I know you've seen. And those. that's amazing. That, that would be the number one thing. Yeah. You know, I would think it'd be something else. And his shoes are size 28. Or oh, hard. He has them custom made. <laughs> and, you know, it's one of those things when they get done. It's with, with, sad because don't they pass away earlier, though, guys? Yeah, that are that generally, big? yeah. Yeah, except this guy's got, uh, he's got some, the, the lease on life, I mean, he's not one of these guys. Right. As a matter of fact, the doctors are saying to him, there's an operation that will slow down this process. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but he says he wants, and he feels great, and he wants to keep getting... He wants to keep growing? Keep getting as tall as he possibly can. You're wow. not going to believe this. How, how old did he appear to be? I don't know, early 30s. Early 30s. Mm-hmm. So they get done. It, it was a newscast with four women. And they get done, and they say, size 25 shoe. Mm-hmm. And you know what they're all thinking. <laughs> yeah. But none of them says anything. And they right. go... You have lots of choices for news in the morning. Thank you for watching all women. You know, meanwhile, as, as soon as they go to break. Oh, you know, you know what they're talking about. Yeah, of course that's what they're talking about. So I bet it wasn't a thimble. So, uh, uh, Beth Ann, make up for that guy yesterday. Make up for that horrible booking yesterday. That woman, Sophie B. Hawkins. Find us the world's tallest man. How are you? I'm not really sure what country he was in, so uh, you might have to do a Google on that. Good luck. Uh, Nick Cage. My man, Nick Cage. He is crazy always. Listen to this now. Uh, with the sushi girl that he married. Mm-hmm. 20-year-old sushi girl. Sushi girl. Oh, she wants to go back to work so bad. Because she worked as sushi girl, 
So you know what Nicholas Gage says? Mm -hmm. I will buy her a sushi restaurant. Fantastic. There you go. Way to He'll go. Buy, Way to go, go buy, Nick. Well, he's buy a movie her, star. Buy her a place of her own. He could buy her a sushi chain if he wanted. Mm -hmm. Now, hey, listen, we don't do the same show that we used to do before, but I'm going I'm to say something now. This is, I want to say, I believe a gift item that most men in this room and most men listening to the show would love to buy would never ever dream of buying for their wives or girlfriends mm -hmm. but perhaps under these circumstances and I'm going to tell you now you'll be able to buy a necklace and here's why you could buy this necklace which most women would find disgusting I'm guessing I saw something on entertainment tonight about uh, Julia Roberts doing a movie with uh, who's that the Star Wars girl that you like that I don't think is Natalie very Portman right mm. so they're doing a movie <laughs> they're doing a movie together um, and um. This thing on Entertainment Tonight was about, you know, how, how like, Natalie Portman might, might be the next Julia Roberts and blah, blah, we don't have the big movie star, but they're, right. but they're really bonding and they're, and they've, and they're even giving each other necklace and, and, for, you know, it's, for whatever reason, they're giving each other jewelry and gifts oh, and, I like to picture that. They allude to the fact sitting that they, on, sitting on the bed giving each other gifts. That they are giving each other crude jewelry. Let me put this on you. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I uh, I did some research on this. This was not on Entertainment Tonight. Uh -huh. The movie is called Closer. After they spent a couple of days filming together, Natalie, Natalie Portman, presented Julia Roberts with a silver necklace that had the C word on it. <laughs> Real big. Really, like, like, like you'd have somebody's name? Uh-huh. You know, see you in Toledo. Like in Diamonds or... No, it's just... just it, but it's, yeah. it was like a... I wonder where she acquired this. Well, I, I want to find out because Julia Roberts went out and and had one made for her that <laughs> said Lil, L-I-L, -L, <laughs> and then had that word after it. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. And isn't right. that cute when that women nice. when women give each other necklaces oh. like that? Isn't that cute? See, I think it's, it's wonderful. Can you only imagine... I'm, I'm there with this story. Can you only imagine... <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the heels of my big fight this weekend with Frida, <laughs> if I said to her, listen, honey, no. I want to just say, I'm sorry, I'm so Well, you'd have to have a new one made. You couldn't get either one. You'd have to have my put in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> a very special. <laughs> the one I love. Yes. Or anyway, just my little. My little. Anyway, that, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's girls. That's how crazy girls are. And that's why That's uh, for some reason turns me on, the fact that they're in a way talking dirty to each other. And uh, Entertainment Tonight they, they didn't even, they just kind of gloss past it. Well, Mary Hart has one. Had to search. I think hers is an ankle bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if she's wearing like, a, well, you know, you don't you don't photograph her from uh, or, down down or, her feet, or it might be one of those belly chains. chains, yeah, yeah belly yeah. chain that mm -hmm. she wears. Oddly, Bob Goen has one too. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Goen. Oh God damn! Um, Going my way. <laughs> This seems almost impossible to me. Uh, I, I love, oh God, do I love the football. Last night, what a great game that was, even though Kansas City killed St. Louis. I just love it, and, and, and Madden was good, and even Al Michaels is good. Um, they are thinking at ABC about canceling Monday Night Football. Yeah, ABC's losing a ton of money. Right. What they're thinking about doing is putting it on ESPN, mm -hmm. which would be cool with me. I mean, I would have no problem with that. Uh, they're talking about maybe putting it on, on NBC. And I read something on uh, ESPN.com today. This, <laughs> this has to just be... You know, the NFL's got everybody by the short hairs when right. it comes to TV and the TV rights. Oh, yeah. But apparently... The NFL is the uh, greatest monopoly in the world. For Monday Night Football, one of the bidders, one of the major bidders now that apparently it's going to be up in the open, is going to be WB. There you go. All right. be the well, isn't WB. that how Fox got themselves yeah, put on the map? Mike, there's a big difference between the WB and Fox, though. Never happened. You know what? Really, though, when you look at Fox and where they used to be, well, that was a long time ago. And see, I think that's how. No, I think it's a brilliant strategy for a uh, network to put itself on the map. Well, mm -hmm. I agree. They'll overpay for it. But anyway, Monday Night Football will probably be off. Do we have ABC. a WB channel here in Washington? <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do, Mike. Yeah, I was just checking. WB fifty. Ah, yes. Of course, WB fifty. I'm trying to think if there's ever a show on WB fifty I've watched. I think watched don't late at night. Don't they have those dating shows? I believe they do. Like eliminate or something like yeah, that. They, yeah, I watch right. sometimes the sitcom Grounded for Life. Grounded the for Life. Sitcom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Buzz. 
You love TV. What do you love on the WB? Well, definitely Grounded for Life. Uh, let's see. They don't have... Uh, UPN has the Star Trek, the, the last one that's left, so that wouldn't be it. But I used to watch uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer on that on that network. On the WB. That was one of your favorite shows. Oh, God, yeah. That was a great show. You know, you know what Buzz has done in his private life? Uh, Buzz... <laughs> I'm not talking about that, Rob. <laughs> I thought his private life. But I covered uh, my lips. What he does is he... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you thought you had covered I your I'd lip? I covered that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh... <laughs> well, I tell you, if he's got it, you got it. And I, and I got it. We all have it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got news for you. If he's got it, we better, we better get to the local authorities. Absolutely. And, and put out one of these masks. You know, have you seen this man? Right. Warning, warning. He's the, you know, he's the typhoid Mary. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one of the things that he's it's a talking... relevant reference, isn't it? Okay. Typhoid <laughs> Mary. <laughs> so doesn't that go back to like the 1800s? Yeah, it predates radio. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet there's a typhoid Mary out there listening right oh, now. Oh, I'm sure there's a carrier. Anyway, never mind. I'll come back to this some other time Very good about thing. you and the way that you file your TV shows. Uh, because the <laughs> necklace, the necklace, and the whole thing talking about uh, ladies, a Forbes list of the 100 most powerful women in the world. Beth Ann McBride. You did not make the list. How many were on the list? A hundred. She was 101 again? Yep, 101. Oh, boy. Maybe and next year. Okay, here are the ones that... that uh, I'm just reading this now, catching my eye. Uh, blah, blah. A lot of them I've never heard of, of, of course. Executive types? Yeah. Mm. Uh, then you have... Uh, Joanne J.K. Rowling, the the haughty Harry Potter Larry lady. She's she's swimming in it. She's number eighty five, most wow. powerful woman. And most powerful really is like rich too, right? Greta Van mm -hmm. Susteren is number eighty four. What? Yep. Let me keep moving up this. That's list. crazy. She has more money than Rowling. Well, no, but more think power, it's, I guess. It's okay, power. all right, it's some political, money, it's, it's I guess. Power. Then I'm going to keep moving up this list. I not one of these names do I recognize on the next page. Yeah, you know. Let me go to the next page and let me just see if, if there's. Uh... I bet she wasn't on that list before she had her plastic surgery. Number thirty. Number thirty. Elizabeth Dole. Yeah. Number twenty-six. <laughs> Want to say I'm proud of her. Lady Dole, Lady Dole is a good lady and she's fantastic. She's a hell of a lot better person than that John Kerry fella. You know, making up all of those wounds. <laughs> Where'd you first get your wounds? I got them the old fashioned way. I got them back there in the days when I was under a chariot, being dragged for miles and miles. Back in, you know, that Ben Hur war. I'm sorry. It was uh, pretty scary too. And Bob Dole was sitting there and looking at Ben Hur and said, why don't you come over here and cut off my wheel? And so he did and I got wounded. <laughs> now I carry a pen in my hand. Diane Sawyer, 26. Mm -hmm. 25, Barbara Walters. Uh, Lynn Cheney, 23. Now we're into the top 20. Here we go. Let's, there's no, nobody there. Here's, uh, now I'm looking in your top 10. Right. Top 10 most powerful women. Powerful women. Ruth Ginsburg, 7. Supreme Court Justice. Sandra Day O'Connor, 6. Yeah, well, okay. Hillary, 5. <laughs> Laura Bush, 4. Wow, below Hillary. And, uh, number 1. Hold on, number, number 3 is some, somebody named Sonia Gandhi. Who? Sonia Gandhi, president mm. of the Congress Party from India. Sonia Gandhi. She's president of India, isn't she? Is mm -hmm. she? I don't president know. I'm sorry. President, president, so president, president, president oh, Congress okay. Party, India. Oh, I okay. see. Number okay. two is Wu Yi, oh. who is the vice president, former mayor of Beijing, China. Okay. And uh, the number one most powerful woman. Again, is TV's Leah Remini. <laughs> Incredible. Every year. Who you know? No, it's, uh, it's what's her name? It's Condoleezza Rice. Condoleezza Rice. Condoleezza. Really? Mm -hmm. There you go. So there's something for you. It's an interesting list. Something for you to aspire to, uh, B.A. Oh, and uh, I have always aspired to be a powerful woman. Uh, listen, if you are going to uh, Romania, here's good news. Mm -hmm. You're planning a trip to Romania. The prostitutes there are now accepting food stamps. Isn't that wonderful? They've started accepting Romanian food stamps instead of cash. Uh, one of the whores... they got to eat. Elena says... She actually talked to the newspaper. Maybe men will be happier to come to us if they don't have to give us money, which may be monitored by their wives. Right. And in, in case you're wondering... How about a can of food? Um, Mike, <laughs> you can get... Now, we're not doing... I'm just going to do first base, second base, third base. Okay. Home run. Right. First base, that would be a six pack of Coca Cola. Wow. Second base, three loaves of bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so dismal. 
Third base. That is so, so desperate. Third base. <laughs> Three loaves of bread. Uh-huh. <laughs> Three jars of peanut butter. Mm -hmm. and now we're getting some. They all have dogs. And if you, if you really want to go all the way. Yeah. You have to come up with Spam. Spam. I wouldn't make this up. Canned meat. Spam. Spam. It says canned meat. God, takes a slash. Yeah. Can, canned meat slash spam. It also, right now there's a guy down the street at a, at a grocery store. I'll take the lot. It, <laughs> it also says, uh, you know those little devil, uh, devil wood, uh, devil, uh, the uh, devil ham? Underwood, underwood devil ham. Yeah. Underwood mm. devil right. ham. Yeah, they like that? That, is, that and spam are like gold. Mm -hmm. Really? Girls will go all the way. So in Romania, if you have a few food coupon, or even better, mm -hmm. if you just show up with a six pack of Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. you get first base. So, so a lot of guys going over to Romania from the States with heavy suitcases? <laughs> I'm taking I a don't steak. Know. It's just, it's I would say, really, if, if, if a can of that Underwood deviled ham w was currency, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, that's what you'd want to take because that would be, you'd be able to jam most of those it's in your suitcase. And, yes. Spam. But Spam's a bigger can. And heavier. Your Underwood is like a small can of tuna. Yeah, but, like may, with but, meat. but maybe if, it, like, there's not a ratio there. Maybe, like, if it's, because it did say three loaves of bread. Wonder how many cans for of. For second uh, base, right. Wonder how many cans of deviled ham. Right. I mean, what, if it was one. What if you bought, like, brought, like, a big canned uh, ham? Oh, well, that'd probably be great, yeah. too. I think Something anything like can. It sounds to me like they want stuff that they can put on the shelf and keep for a while. Well, mm -hmm. Rob, you wanted me to announce this? Please. Okay, this is, this is an item. Just for Rob Spiewak. All right, very good. Rob Spiewak. Oh, I always say very good, and then I regret saying that afterwards. No, no, no. It's nothing like a, 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 a story time. that... No, it's uh, this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, ah. Elvis has left the building. He got uh, killed in a car accident. Yeah, he'll be missed. Right. There that was go. his job. Hey, That's, uh, That's yeah. good, Rob. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis... Has left the building. There you go. Thank you and good night. This is the one thing this what guy, was wrong with him? This is the thing he Pull wants me to. This is the thing he wants me to get on the show today. That's all important. of the, all the things he can bring to my attention. He keeps him. Don't forget. Don't forget to mention Al uh, Warren. Al Warren. I said I'll try to work it. In. <laughs> and Warren. then when it's apparent that I'm not going to get it in, yeah, he just comes up behind me and puts the cartridge in. Out of respect to the Devoren family, yeah. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building. There's no truth to the rumor that he was driving to the airport with a suitcase full of spam. <laughs> yes, well, I have no comment. But regretfully, he has left us. Go fuck for <laughs> when, we, uh, when we come back, oh, oh it's The Apprentice on The Apprentice. We'll yeah. be right back. This is The Don and Mike Show. WJFK. Too busy to meet new friends? The WJFK Dateline can change your life. Log on to WJFK.matchlink.com. Yeah, log on all the time. Don and Mike, WJFK. This is the Don and Mike Show. If you really want to test them out, why don't you try the old Jerry Lewis trick? Jerry Lewis. I heard when Jerry Lewis left a meeting, he'd purposely leave a briefcase with a tape recorder in it. Then after five minutes, he'd come back for it, listen to what everyone said about him. That's pretty paranoid. Yes, it is. I like it. The Don and Mike Show. Hello. Hi, Julia. Oh. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Right. Are you retarded? Hey, 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 hey. There's a time and place for every... It's not a rhetorical question. Are you retarded? Zero tolerance for stupidity. Right. The Don and Mike Show. Here we go with uh... oh my... <laughs> You're not... You're not talking about our friend Sammy Hagar, are you? No, uh, station... Well, maybe. <laughs> station break. Uh, you're hearing the show. Harrisonburg, Virginia, 95.5. WZXI. Las Vegas, 11.40 KSFN. Dallas, where it's late at night. Live 105. And in Pittsburgh, 1550. WURP. Wow. Uh, joining us now on the phone is this dude from The Apprentice. His name is uh, Nick, Nick Warnock. 
And uh, we have a clip of him and his final words on the show. Very good. Uh, joining us now to uh, help us out as we get ready for Apprentice on Apprentice. Yes. Apprentice on Apprentice on the Don and Mike. It's time for James the Intern. James, who spends his time here at radio station WJFK. Wearing that mysterious yellow wristband that we don't understand. Answering the phones. Yes. Uh, licking envelopes. Uh -huh. Licking other things. Uh, he's the boy toy of all of the girls that work here. Oh, look at, look at Beth uh -huh. Ann preening him. Don, come on. Hey, has a... Uh, Stop it. Has Beth Ann... Well, there she's gone. <laughs> Have you... Have you broken her in yet? No, no, I haven't. <laughs> I mean, I, have you given her the infinity discount, if you know what I'm saying? No, I haven't. i got to call her probably this weekend. I yeah. think we're... Very, very good. But you're just, uh, you know, basically working your way through all the women here at WJFK, right? All, and, and, and any woman who will have you, you will take. Isn't that the, the, the rule? That is correct. Very good. And, <laughs> and, and as an intern, exactly what do you do here? I, I have done every... I have done a lot of things here. Well, we Traffic, continuity. Um, I've gone... You know, worked with Jag. I worked with Julie. How have you Dave. found your experience? It's been it's been very fun. I've learned a lot here. That's all good. I've been here. It's yeah. done this week. Too. What college are you as affiliated yeah. with? Because I, I heard a rumor floating around that you were like a mid thirties guy that just looked young and, <laughs> and came in off the street. You're really affiliated with a real college. Well, what school? I go to Shenandoah University. Shenandoah University. Yeah. Shenandoah University. Shenandoah yeah. University. We're gonna have to check those credentials. <laughs> they're not a Big Ten school, are they? No, they're not. They're no. pretty no. awful. Do they have no. a football team? Uh, yes, we do. Really? What level? Division. Division three. Division three. Well, yeah. okay. They were, they were co conference champions last All right, okay, uh, that's all right. Uh, well, listen, uh, James the intern, you've kind of been our apprentice. Uh, what we'd like you to do now is take this segment, talk to the... Shenandoah <laughs> University. Sounds like the only major out there is, like, cattle ranching. Talk to, um, <laughs> right. talk to this guy, Nick Warnock, who was on the show. All he really cares about is getting the plug-in for the Apprentice DVD. And this is this a first for you that you're doing a... Uh, uh, is this your first interview done on commercial radio? Yes, this would be my first oh, interview. Oh, wow. So, exciting. Very good. So let him know I'm that, green. that you're, right. you're taking over, and I, I have a clip of him on the show. You just give me a cue... <laughs> When you want it, okay? Don's okay. going to be well, your engineer. We'll go ahead. You ready, James? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, Buzz, how yes. about an intro, please, for, right. for James? Very good. Let's go. Live from the Westwood One Radio Network, it's the James the Interview. It's the James the Intern <laughs> <Buzz>. Interview. <laughs> Buzz. Now, here's James. Good intro, Buzz. Thanks, Buzz. Thanks. So embarrassed. <laughs> Nick? Hello, Nick? Yes. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. So, uh, you were on the last, uh, the last Apprentice, Hold correct? On, tell them who you are. Oh, I'm James the Intern. And tell them why you were interviewing him. I'm interviewing because they, uh, they pulled me in today and uh, they wouldn't tell me what I was doing. But It's uh, called Apprentice on Apprentice. Apprentice on Apprentice. Tell them you're an intern. I'm an intern. I just told them I'm James the Intern. Well, I'm, you uh, should have read up on it. I, I know, I know. I'm just kidding. Well, uh, so you were on the first Apprentice, correct? That's right. I was on the first one. We started it all. How did you do? I did tremendous, but first I want to give a big shout out to Sam Solovey, D.C. resident and newlywed. Oh, okay. And don't let that side track got that. the terms. Just you keep going shout. with the interview when a guy gives a plug like that. Okay. All right. So you were on the first one. You said you did okay, huh? Yeah, I did okay. You didn't win, though, did you? I didn't win. You didn't win. What happened? I don't know. You it was a combination of maybe I had a little too little work experience. I was having a good time anyway. I probably uh, made out pretty well regardless, even though I didn't win. Where do you work at? I uh, work with a publisher, Jason, the publisher Jason Bin, who does L.A. Confidential, Gotham Magazine, and Hamptons Magazine. And I'm also on the speaking circuit, and uh, it's been a ton of fun since the show ended. Where did, uh, where did you go to school at? University of San Diego. University of San Diego. Did, yeah. you, have a, did you have a football team there? No. No, you didn't. They did, but it was a very small school. It, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. Have you seen the uh, the new Exorcist flick yet? I saw it yesterday. How was that? It was great. It was great. Any 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 highlights from it? Any anything from that? No, it was very very good. Read it was what nicely I wrote. done. Sorry? No, it was very good acting. Why read, are you uh, <laughs> contemplating to go see it? Read what I wrote for you. No, you think you're pretty hot stuff, don't you? Uh, no, I'm pretty confident. You're pretty confident. Uh, so, so what do you think of Donald Trump? I think he's great. You think he's great? Did you meet his wife? He doesn't have a wife. Well, the, his girlfriend. Yeah, I met his girlfriend. She's hot, isn't she? She's great looking. She's gorgeous. 
So was there any, there was any playing around in the house when you were there with the other apprentices, right, or no? Here's one for no. you. No. There you go. You have a square head, don't you? Uh, no, it's pretty round. Do you have red hair? Yeah. Is it is it pretty red? Have you ever uh, been to it, Ireland? It, yeah, it's uh, it's fairly red. Yeah, I'll tell you, man, you need some work on your wit, dude. Oh, you're gonna on get my, in the radio. On my what? Your, your wit. On my wit. Yeah, wit. W I T. Do men dislike you? Um, do men dislike me? Yeah. Why don't you clarify the question? Do men dislike you? Do are you friends with a lot of men or no? Uh, yeah. When you when you go out to a club, do you get numbers from men or or from women? I uh, get numbers from women. Oh, hey Nick, we have a clip. Do you mind if we do you mind if we play that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, one second. I thought I was the best one there, but I am 27. I don't have the work experience that Bill and Kwame and Amy do. I'm sure that played into it. I'm excited to have had this opportunity. I did my best. Went a thousand miles an hour and 130 percent. I have nothing to be ashamed of and have no regrets. I went big and unfortunately it didn't work out this time, but sooner or later it's all going to happen. Wow, a thousand miles an hour, that's pretty fast. Good clip. Yeah, it's pretty fast. Uh, are you, are you, is this like a, a stern wannabe show? Are you like stuttering, John? No, am I stuttering, okay, John? Go, am I stuttering? What you guys are going for? I didn't know I was stuttering. Well, no, it's a character on probably the best radio station in the world. I'm familiar with it. Thank I'm assuming you. Uh, this is... This is uh, kind of like a imitate imitation of it. So, do you like me as an interviewer? Uh, or no? It might be kind of rough. I think we need. I think we need to. I think we might need to dive in right here. I think we might need to dive in. Listen, Mr. Loser, this is not an imitation of uh, stuttering John. Yeah, you, you went, is, that, that's it. We we had to jump this, in here. This is an intern, and uh, frankly, we have nothing to say to you. You're a guy that was on the show before. We're just trying to figure out a way. Our intern talking to you, but listen, Mr. Hot Stuff, pound sand, pound that DVD apprentice, pound. That. There you go. Adios. How you like that? Take care. Yeah. Loser. <laughs> Take care. Hope you enjoyed your visit. There's the phony laugh. Yeah. <laughs> There's the phony laugh, hope, Nick. Hope you enjoyed your hey, you uh, just guys shy. Keep up the great work. Big just just shy, just yeah. shy of 15 work. minutes of fame. <laughs> just what shy. Was, hold on. Stay on the line. What was that? Yeah, I, just, you, know, you guys are doing a great job, obviously. <laughs> no, no, obviously we're not. Obviously we're not. We've done something wrong in your eyes. Well, you, you know, you it's know, like you asking me about a square head. I mean, yeah, it's just a little what insulting. We, listen, dude, what are we supposed to ask? You were on this show seriously four months ago. Right, your producer called me, buddy. Your producer called me. Hey, listen, I'm not your buddy. And my producer's too polite to tell you. The only reason you're even on this show is so that we get the new guy. That was the only way that we get the new guy is by having you on some loser from a previous retread year. You, Who are you? What you are you it? are simply you are simply a pawn. NBC throws you out. If you want the guy who's going to be on the new millionaire, you got to take this old crappy guy who already lost. And incidentally, he's got to push the DVD. That's why that's why our producer booked you. So just so you know where you are on the food chain, you might think that we're Howard Stern imitators, and I might be overly defensive on this, but you should just know where you are. You're a stinking pawn for NBC so, we, so that we'll get some other worthless tool who's going to be on the show and be famous for five minutes. Are you done? We're you done. I'm like never Stern. done. You, I mean, you're not enjoy part minute part 14. Of me. I'm never done. I'm never done. Oh, you're so tough. Enjoy minute 14 of your 14 I'm and a half minutes of fame. I'm tougher than you. Boy, you're pushing it now. <laughs> There's the phony laugh. Yeah. No wonder you lost on this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this went very well. And I bet you're so stupid you're not even getting any money from the DVD, are you? No, actually. No, I'm not. I, I didn't think I was here to plug the DVD, to be honest with you. Really? Why would uh, we? You know, why I, would I, we? Why would we I possibly really, have you on? Really hold on! Hold on! Don't... Class, like uh, what is on the radio right now? Uh, yeah, you only do high class interviews because you're so freaking hot. And what a coincidence! The day, hot, buddy. The, day the day that you're booked on the show is the day that The Apprentice is available on DVD. What a coincidence! What a coincidence! You're not here to promote it, but maybe the people at NBC are. I, I, I just don't get it. If we didn't ask you mean-spirited questions, like why are you such a loser tool that you'd be on that stupid show? Oh, you're edgy, man. 
No, but I mean, the fact is, you're the one that brought up the whole Stern thing, so you're imitating Stern. We're just having fun with an intern, dude, and I'm not trying to be edgy, and if you want me to be edgy, I'll be edgy off the telephone with you, not on the radio. I'm just telling you, you're the flavor of the month. You should be glad you should be on any radio show. Because... Yeah, I am. I'm grateful for it. Thanks for having me on. You guys were great. Well, you suck. <laughs> and we'll be on the radio a long time after people have forgotten whoever you are. Incidentally, I never even knew. I mean, really, nobody knows who you are. So, I mean, let's right? Do oh yeah, nobody knows who I am, but everybody knows who you are, right? No, I didn't say that. I mean, more I came people, on more... an interview. I thought it was an intern. Then you know, the producer was cool, and then uh, you guys start with this stuff: the square head. Do do I go out with men? I mean, the red hair. I mean, hey, what, what cool. are we? Hold on, dude. What are we supposed we to ask? Say, you? We didn't yeah. ask you if you go out with men. We said, are you disliked by men? Uh, well, it, you know, it's just coming up with the jokes. and the, I, Yeah, so what are we supposed to do, really ask you? Gee, Nick, what was it like being on The Apprentice? What was Donald Trump like? Please, who wants to hear that crap? We don't. No, I know. I don't know, I don't know why on earth you called and, and booked me on the show then. Okay, for the final time, you're being used as a pawn by NBC. We had to book you to get the new people. Oh, oh. Hey, Mr. Pro, watch your language. <laughs> watch your language. Oh. Nice. You're big and tough, aren't you? Nice drop the F-bomb on the radio. I, 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 this is... <laughs> this is what? This is now enjoyable. It is enjoyable. <laughs> this is enjoyable. This is real radio. This is what happens when, when we... You know, you want to talk about reality TV? This, hey, uh, James, the intern, what do you think? I... I... I'm a little, I'm a little taken are you, back. Are you I wanted to find this. Well, you know, we just had this to jump in there. This is my first time. We, I we wanted to interview him, and, well, and, and, and he went off on. Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, it happened mm. like that. But yeah. we we jumped in. This is real. Yes, we're because really mad at this guy. He got us really mad. I can tell. Yeah, very sensitive. It'd be like, how would you like it? The first thing we said to you was, "Hey, you're okay, but aren't you kind of a rip off of Rupert from Survivor?" Uh, possibly. Yeah, it all comes from Survivor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What comes from Survivor? Uh, all reality shows. Mark Burnett uh, revolutionized television with the Survivor. Could you mm -hmm. take Rupert one on one? <laughs> you guys aren't even funny. That was James the intern who was uh, saying that, and he's trying to be helpful. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm he's trying to incredible. interview some more. He's a young, you know what's a young fun, guy. What's funny is Shenandoah University. Yeah. You know, trying to do his job here, and you know Look, you were you were you were all I'm over him. You got all over him. But I mean, and you know, you strike me as a bit of a tough guy. You know, a guy thinks he's tough. Too and, you know, we had well, to, I mean, we uh, had to uh, jump you, in. You, you, so we're not trying to be on what the show. There's not. No, I've never seen you on the show. We have never seen the show. I want to. How on earth could you come up with that conclusion? Not because of the way you were talking on the telephone, tough guy. You're one of these guys. We hey, get a I lot of you guys like this on the buddy. show. Hey, hey, what's happening? Hey, what's happening? That's what we based it on. A very, very superficial and instant assessment of your personality based on the way you spoke on the telephone. And we were correct as we always are. We are always right about it. I mean, especially now when we get to the point where we're just talking. If you were an okay guy, we would just say, hey, listen, we had a misunderstanding. But it's obvious you're just a tool. And the f bomb that you know that's 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 talking about our livelihood there. Right that's, when you want to be a tough guy. Right, right, right. So, so that's right. why that's why this has gone south. We're not trying to pretend to be right, here. Nick. No, no. If we replayed the interview, you could see how it was going south just from the get go. From the get go, just from the get go. I blame myself. <laughs> you blame yourself, Buzz, oh. because when you when you stumbled over the intro, yeah, it intro. doesn't usually happen, and mm -hmm. it's okay. Buzz. I set the tone. That's okay. Sometimes we have bad guests on the show. We don't know they're going to be bad guests. Sometimes it goes south. That's what happens when you're doing live radio. That's okay. You stink, but I'm sure you're lined up for a bunch of really great hot interviews, and I'll be waiting with bated breath one day to eat these words that Nick. What's his name? That Nick. Nick Warnock becomes a success in some facet of life. I'll, I'll wait to see uh, when the, you're on the front page of what, what, what is Time it? Magazine. Go yeah. all the way. Yeah, there you go. All right. Sometimes oh. they go south. Hold on. <laughs> now that we're Stern hold dot com. You may want to read up. That's now, what's, that what's, go ahead. No, no, you're you're staying on the line. We'll give you the plug. You got a you got a percentage. No, he just said howardstern.com. Oh, howardstern.com. Uh -huh. Are you aware that uh, Howard does the morning show on this radio station? At a lot of our stations, I think he's great. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Do, so we got we. that impression. So do we. We do a different show, though, dude. I'll tell you this, though. Now, do you uh, do you live uh, in New York, sir? No. Now where, that where, where do you live? L.A. Hold on, Mike. L.A. We're not on this? in L.A. I will tell you, we're on in Washington D.C., where we have been number one for the better part of twenty years. Hold on. I'm reading the bio on this guy. Mm -hmm. Who do you admire most, personally or professionally? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh! That's your choice? Oh, yeah, I think he's great. Are you a bodybuilder? 
No? No, look at his picture. Of course not. No. What, do you just admire his mind? How tall are you, Nick? Uh, he's got a master plan of achievement. He has uh, a yeah, master plan. A master plan. Watch out your semantics yes. there, buddy. He's got a master plan. He's got a Bavarian with a master plan. A Bavarian he, he, with a he, master. he came over from Austria with a plan, and he made his dreams come true. I don't, I don't, I don't see why that's uh, so funny. <laughs> well, we, we think he's a bit of a uh, mal. I don't, I don't know whose website I could give out to try to get under your skin unless I said, like, Amorosa.com or anybody that anybody would remember. Remember, I remember that name from that show. Uh, right. This has gone very poorly, and and you stink, and you're awful, and and whatever. Uh, we must say good day. Good day to you, sir. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Although good it's day always, to you. We'll give you the chance to have the last word because unlike the other radio show you mentioned, we're fair. So All right, go, go ahead. You have the last word. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> wow. Hey, thank you, James. Yeah. You hung right in there. Yeah. And, uh, I really there. wanted to do it. I really wanted to go through with it. And man, here's the way this works. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for doing our stuttering John skit for us. <laughs> I should point out that when this started, when when we were sitting there, James was going to do the interview, and then the guy when he had that kind of tough guy thing, we had it. We decided. Well, actually, I did. I was the first one to do it. I decided I'd write down something he could say <laughs> that was kind of uh, challenging him a little bit, and that's uh, you know, you think you're pretty hot. Don't you? That's what I wrote down. Yeah. And then we all uh, and we do that occasionally where we bring somebody that doesn't have experience in <laughs> and we write questions down and that's the way it went and then it went completely south. He hey. didn't like square hit either. He didn't like that one. He didn't okay. like square. Yeah, that was <laughs> mine. That was not even. Like, I think the square head might have set him off. I'm just yeah, looking at the picture of you. I wrote down for James. You have a square head. Right. Uh, we'll all remember this day. That was a good segment, James. <laughs> Thank you, James. What was your? Uh, what are your feelings for your first segment on uh, commercial radio? I, you know, I was really excited to do it, and it just went, it went down, it went down. You got a real, uh, you, this was an eyewitness experience that yeah. you really got to see what happens yeah, I, when, uh, I, I when really, a guy really gets this angry. I kind of stood back there for a second. But also, you know, the truth is, you see him and you see me, yeah, and you know, it really didn't get us angry. Here you no, go. no, there's uh, Matt in Buffalo. Matt, hey. Hey, are you calling with congratulations for James the intern? <laughs> no. Oh no. No, I, I was I was wondering why you guys let that guy stay on the air so long. Because it's our show. It's fun. It's fun. I mean, that's you know, it gets into kind of a dueling banjos thing, and we have a good time with it. You know, it was funny. He he was one second away from saying, "Do you know who I am?" Like he's something special. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You got that in his tone? Yeah. Oh yeah, I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> too bad. Too bad you didn't hear and drop the f bomb. Yeah. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Great moment is trouble. Hello, Don and Mike. Don and Mike. Yeah. I want to congratulate James and the intern. Great interview. I love the way you guys treat losers like losers. That guy. <laughs> Great interview, guys. You guys. Well, look at that, James. Thank you. Yeah, you can put this on your resume when you go back to the 13th grade <laughs> and tell them, you know, they're at uh, whatever, at Lunchbox Academy. <laughs> Shenandoah University. That's it. Hello, what is, the, what is the mascot name at Shenandoah University? The Hornet. The, 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 the Hornet. Hornet. The singular? The singular? Hornet. It's with oh. a Hornet. One of the, the fierce oh, yeah. I the, thought the, it was such a small school. You only had one Hornet. The, the basketball, basketball is... Like Stanford? The Cardinal? The Cardinal. Right. The basketball gym is the Hornet's Nest. Oh, the Hornet's Nest. Real cheesy. All right, very good. But that's all right, hey. Shenandoah uh, University. Give him a plug. Hello. Uh, Don and Mike show. Uh, fiercest insects. No. Hey, Don and Mike. Yes. Hey, I just want to say that was the funniest damn bit I've heard in a long time. <laughs> Great. Thank you. See, Thank you. See, James. Thank you. Everybody likes you, James. Hello, Chad. Hey, can we get James to call Patty Heaton? <laughs> <laughs> Do I wish? That would be, be one of our our previous interviews that went south. All right, uh, James, you are dismissed. Thank, Thank you, you for joining Thank us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, James the intern. There he goes. Who knew that that would have gone as well as it did on, yeah. on Apprentice to Apprentice? Absolutely. I like our Apprentice a lot better. <laughs> we'll, uh, yeah. we'll continue this total and copy. So do the lady. Of the morning, lady. Of the morning show. Oh, listen, hold on. I don't think Howard did this this morning. I love Jew to Jew, and oh, we've got so do I. we've got today a topic mm -hmm. that is perfect for now. Who am I? I am a doctor. Or am I the doctor? Or am I You're the, the doctor? Doctor Donald I'm, Goldstein. I, who am I? Who am I? Doctor Donald Goldstein, and you are Michael Goodman, attorney at law. Attorney at law. Okay, just stand by for action. Some 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 hot Jew to Jew action. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Let's take a call. K-Pay, California. Hello. Hi, Larry. Uh, Hi. Don Imus. Uh, how you doing today? Love your radio show. Uh, can you tell me uh, what happened to Don and Mike in and, and, uh, New York City? If they're not on live anymore? Are they uh, back on? They were taken off for a while. Are they on or out, out of... Not on the air in New York, Don. Don and Mike? 
Yeah. You know, I don't know whether they're on or not. Well, Don and Mike are on. They're on in. They're on in Washington, right? Don and Mike. I, I, think, I think that's where they originated from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Las Vegas. Hello. The Don and Mike Show. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Now in their 20th season, it's the Don and Mike Show. Do you like us, Larry? Nope. <laughs> Come on, a little bit? Uh, sometimes not. Oh, okay. Would you like to see us kicked out of the country? Yes. Sure about that? Would you like to see us kicked out of the country and, and like, drawn and quartered? Probably yes. <laughs> And if that happened? It was funny. Oh, it was funny. <laughs> but just for the record, you're most interested in... Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Oh, who are you? I'm Larry of the Corner. Okay. Very good, Larry. Uh, Buzz? Yes. We need you for another intro. I'm ready this time. Here we go. Now, we do love Jew to Jew. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. Dr. Donald Goldstein. And I'm Michael Goodman, attorney at law. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the story. A novelty store in New York is telling customers to keep their change. Hmm. The Abracadabra Superstore has had a new policy called rounding down. Wonderful. For instance, you go in there and you buy stuff that costs $32.75. Mm -hmm. They only charge you $32. I like that. That's nice. Okay. I don't. Yes, of course. You, 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 because you're, you know, that's all you think about. Mike, you don't. Well, I do, but I think this is wonderful for the consumer. So the, the doctor, the doctor, the lawyer, we're ready. Buzz, ready. If you wouldn't mind, we're on the air. Live from the Westwood One Radio Network, it's Jew to Jew with your host, Dr. Donald Goldstein and Michael Goodman, attorney at law. Hello again, everyone. This is Michael Hoffman, and you're listening to Jew to Jew. Thank you, Michael, here on the Westwood One Network. Hi. This is Dr. Donald Goldstein. And I'm Michael Goodman, attorney at law, and we uh, are glad to have you back once again. And we've got a wonderful, wonderful thing to talk about in the world of uh, retail sales. You say it's wonderful. I don't think so. Well, I know you're concerned. You've uh, expressed concern over the fact that uh, this individual might be losing losing dollars to Paul us. Paul Bloom. But I think it's a wonderful yeah. idea. For Hello, Paul. Paul. Hello. 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 Well, welcome to the show, Paul. Well, thank you. Uh, I've been told that you would like a plug. No problem. www.abracadabrasuperstore.com Now, we're aware of the practice that you have of rounding down. And I just want to say, uh, this is Michael Goodman, attorney at law, and I want to say this is a wonderful idea, and I'm sure it's, well, been, very, it's been very well received. Uh -huh. uh, has it been uh, well received? Well, I like it myself. Just for myself, that I don't have to bother with the change at the register, and uh, Paul, it, ma it makes things quicker at the register, and the customers love it, of course. Paul, Doctor Goldstein here. Doctor Goldstein. Uh, seriously, call me Doctor. Doctor uh, Dr. Donnie. I'm kidding. Call me Donnie. Donnie. Donnie Doctor. Donnie Doctor. Um, I want to tell you something that I think you're losing your mind and you're losing money for instance if i come in See, it doesn't mean you're losing your mind for instance if i come in it doesn't your, mean you're losing your money you're losing your money i think he's doing something it has nothing to do with your mind he's i think he's sane and he's doing something wonderful for the consumer and he says it's wonderful for him i think it's wonderful for the consumer i want to buy and buy some magic cards for my child for my child mm -hmm. you know for little alan right and and let's say that I go in, and these cards cost four ninety nine. Right. You're telling me if I give you four dollars, four dollars. That's all. I walk. Budget. I walk out of the store. That's it. Hey, you shut. Ninety nine cents. Ex excuse me. Excuse mm -hmm. my French. Yeah, of course. You putts. You just had ninety nine cents. Walk out the door. Well, of course you wouldn't like it, Donald, because the, you've never undercharged anything. Well, you've never, you know, and I think you're, you're totally uh, your prices are completely unreasonable. Uh, listen, uh, my my prices, uh, be it a gallbladder, mm -hmm. uh, be, uh, be it appendicitis, yes. or be it my fabulous uh, turn at the elective plastic surgery, I, I think you'll find that my prices are very reasonable. But you've you never rounded friend, down anything in your life. What is your hourly rate? My hourly rate is irrelevant to this discussion. What it's if someone rate, was really down on their luck? Would I don't, you give them a lower rate? I don't have, you know, it's not 99. What you if, don't say $150.99 an hour. What if someone came to you? Someone came to you. Works. Paul, oh, I, I apologize. Att Attorney Goodman, excuse me, Mr. 
Mr. Goodman, but I've been done wrong in I'm this sorry. election. I'm sure that I'm wrong. Would you please? Can I ask Paul? Can I ask Paul a question, yeah, please? Yeah, I'm still here. Paul, uh, and incidentally, the, the website, I will give you another plug, is uh, abracadabrasuperstore.com. And uh, I'm sure that your business has increased. It has. With this, of course it has. And I'm are, sure you getting, are you getting good pub? I'm sure you've lost money. I might have lost some change, but I didn't lose any uh, money. Let, Did you hear I, what he said? Did you hear what he said? He hasn't lost any I money. May I tell you something? It's a, the change. You, let me explain the change family to you. Mm -hmm. There's Penny. Nickel, dime, quarter. Well, thank you for enlightening me. I think the public hasn't come to grips that change doesn't amount to much these days. That's oh. right. It's Tell that to the gigantic it's, jaw I, that I have on top of my jaw. It's going the way of the dinosaur. Do you find that, uh, that, that uh, in general this keeps your bookkeeping easier? Uh, yes. Of course it does. Now, the notion of the sales tax troubles me. What say you? We, we pay the sales tax. The difference oh, hold on. Wait a minute. That's more money out of your pocket? More money out of my pocket. More money out of your pocket. But I will tell you, you that overall... You, know, you, uh, you put that towards advertising. It's the same thing. I don't. Hold on. You put it towards advertising. Think That's he, more but money he, out of your pocket. But he's on our show. Think of the advertising he's getting, and I'm sure he's doing... But I'm telling, gotta, I'm telling people... You've got you a man can, that you can, can handle this. You can go to abracadabrasuperstore.com. Right. You can New York, spend, you can New York spend, City. Come to the, to the store. Where's, where's your location in New York? Uh, 19 West 21st Street. It's a beautiful right. between location. Between 5th and 6th Avenue in the Flatiron District. It's a beautiful nice. location. And uh, you know, you we get... sell to all the TV shows and the movie studios and theaters in town. What's, uh, what's a neat item you could get at your store? What's something that would be special? I'll tell you what my hottest item is. What's your hottest item? On the website is the Donald Trump wig. Oh, right now, that's would you tell me How much is that? It's fifty-five dollars. So if I come in, it, in the store, was, pay it's, cash. It's flat fifty-five dollars. No, it'd be tax fifty-nine seventy-four. It'd be fifty-nine dollars. You say fifty-nine. Say, say you take that that hassle away from the consumer, and I, I say a uh, bravo to you. And bravo I say to, to you, you, sir, I will. You're I, worried I, about him losing money. I will not. not don't worry about listen, me losing listen, money. Listen, listen to me, Paul. Yes. The next time in, I'm in New York. Come by. When, when a squeegee man comes up to my town car right. and says, "Oh, Dr. Goldstein, don't you remember me? I was Paul Bloom. I was on your show. You know what I'll do? I'll hit the power window and I'll say, I told you, you're losing money. I you would, think I'm going to be reduced to a squeegee man. I, that's 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 the doctor talking. I no, am that's a, the doctor. I am Michael the Goodman, doctor, attorney at law, and I will tell you that I think this is a marvelous idea. I'm going to go. If I may, most of your listeners, are, I'm sure, would. How do you it. make money? If uh, you I know may, what? may I go a step further? I think that this will catch on, right. and I think that you will I see right. more stores, including the big ones, the chains, that will right. go to this As to always. simplify. Because I believe, like Mr. Bloom, that the change system in the United States is antiquated. May I say sure. something? Yes, you may. I'm a, I'm a physician. I'd love, I'd love our guest. I am a healer. Talk. Yes. I yes. try to help people. I the am person that I'm trying to help here. It's not a big, my patient. It's not a big help when they open your bill. My patient. Yes. Oh. And your hourly rate again? You bring up my hourly rate, but I just, I'm just i saying that I like the idea of rounding, and I've seen some of your bills. Four Christmas there, seasons ago, there, 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 four holiday seasons ago, 78, 72, four Hanukkahs 83, ago, ridiculous. four Kwanzas ago, You're out of who your actually mind. went down to the soup kitchen? I understand. And I went there, I and you know what I did? I dropped off. I dropped off a bag of perishable goods. May I just say this? And I don't. Have I, you ever done? You know, as much? I, I don't like it when we argue, but I will tell you that guilt is a strong motivation. All right. I'm not don't be passive aggressive. I'm not going to be. Uh, we should plug the website again. Abracadabrasuperstore.com. Paul, I, ap I, I apologize Paul, for this argument. And Paul, I, I think I'm going to say good day to you guys. Paul, listen. As a doctor, I'm telling you, I'm concerned doctor. about you. Thank I'm you. concerned. You're the patient. I'm concerned where, where he's going to put all his money because he's going to be an overwhelming success. Please consider occasionally. Please consider occasionally rounding up. Rounding up. No, I'm not a doctor. You're not there. Bravo to you, sir. Bravo. And you're, and you're soon to be a squeegee man. No, he's not. He's going to be. Listen, I, I don't see how you're going to make money on this. He's Someone going to, to do you. fine. Someone has to tell you. We don't you. need to be Anyway, this, anyone come to town, they come to New York, uh, come to Abracadabra Superstores, and we're at 19 West 21st Street. We'd love to have you. If you want sure, to call me on. and talk to me personally, you can call me at, in the store. Come in. My number is 212-627-5194. At this time, I'm going to sign off. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Me on. Thank bye. you for ha coming Thank on the you. show, Paul. Thank okay, you. Bye now, Buy, guys. buy bye something bye. for $1.99 and give the man a dollar. <laughs>
Thanks for, ridiculous. Thanks for joining us for Jew to Jew with your host, Dr. Donald Goldstein and Michael Goodman, attorney at law. Jew to Jew is brought to you by the law firm of Ephraim and Associates on the Westwood One Radio Network. This is Golan Chappelle speaking. <laughs> hey, you have a new name. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, hold on. Oh, there we go. Let me get back to there. Where's the name? Select three there. Bingo. I like Buzz's new name. <laughs> Golan Schiffel. I like that. Yeah. Very, very nice. Governor like Franz. That. that was wonderful. He says the policies increased business, mm -hmm. but more importantly has kept his customers from chiseling him down or asking for discounts. Bingo. Mm -hmm. oh, Thank you for joining us. <laughs> I hope you all had a good time. That was great. <laughs> I did, attorney. I always do, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Always big fun. I love it when you guys bicker. Thank you. <laughs> we were bickering today. Yeah. Weren't we? And with good reason. Your hourly rate, incidentally. It's exorbitant. Yes. And I'm aware of it's that. It's like, it's the budget for a small country. I understand it is. Well, you know, with uh, the bills, the, a man has to pay his bills. Mm -hmm. My wife, Frieder, gets into a, a, a fender bender. I say, call my good friend, Michael Goodman. And the next thing I know, I get something in the mail, and I say, oh, this must be an invitation to a party sure. or a get-together. You know what it was? It was a B-I-double-L. -L. I understand. A B-I-double-L. -L. I try. I try to do the very best I can. I do. That's why I have a new special option in my car. What's that? An egg timer. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> and for your convenience, I keep a credit card machine in my reception area. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I stole that idea. <laughs> you stole that idea from the lawyers at Infinity Broadcasting. I said, pay as you exit. <laughs> uh, let's clear these lines out. Let's get some uh, phone calls going. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> At 877-365-3636, we will take your call on any topic. And as we demonstrated yesterday, anybody can call. Amen. 877-365-3636. That's from America, Canada, 800-636-1067 in D.C. on WJFK 202-432-1067. Your calls are coming up. We look forward to talking to you, as we always do. No charge. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. The Radio Factor with Bill O'Reilly. Who is this O'Reilly guy and why did they give him a radio program? Yes. Bill I, BG Product. Weekdays, noon to two. On 106.7 WJFK. Don and Mike, This is the Don and Mike Show. Hi, Mark. Hi, guys. How are you? We're talking about uh, cyber sports, all kinds of websites, all kinds of, of sites. We're walking around here at Camden Yards today, and, and look what... I, you may have seen this on the air. This is a bunny walking around with, with a cell phone. I'm not quite sure what... Actually, I know what this is. This bunny is on the radio now. You're with the Don and Mike Show, right? Yes, I am, Mark. And you have to plug the Don and Mike Show, which is on what radio station? It's on 1300 AM in Baltimore, the Don and Mike Show. Happy Easter, everybody, from Don and Mike. And, and uh, it's also in Washington, correct? Yes, it is. It's a nationally syndicated show all over the country. This is not something you should do. Do something bunny-like for me while I talk about my story here. We're getting coast-to-coast -coast coverage right now on the Don and Mike show. So, and how's that? Is that? That's pretty exciting. We own this exclusively, so this is a proud moment for all of us. We took the best that the baseball world has to offer with those of uh, the world of computer aficionados. And we found, well, actually we found some websites that even the most casual baseball fan Mark. will find is a hit. Mark, hey, I could do that. The Orioles told me that he gets something like hundreds of thousands of hits during the off season. So check it out. Let me give you the keywords to look up. There's uh, the Orioles. You type in there and you get that Major League hey, Baseball, Mark, baseball prospectus. Stuff, but uh, Don really wants to say hello to Mary Beth okay. in Washington. He, he wants to say hello, Mary Beth. Okay. Hi. Okay, Mary Beth's off Don today, but thank you. AM, National Radio Show. All right, we got the bunny in, and you can look up the bunny on the web page as well, I guess, Stan and Sandra. Well, he's like the ever ready bunny. He just keeps, keeps on going. going. He keeps, so he's already been. He's been thrown out of the stadium, yeah. so we thought we took him and give him a little home here. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. Okay. All, All right. right. All right, let's throw him off the newscast now so we can move on, okay? All right. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Mark. Mark. <laughs> oh, man. Bye bye, bunny. The Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Is it the Don and Mike show? You bet. Here we go. Station break. Green Bay, Wisconsin. WNFL. 
Let's say in Wisconsin, Mad City, Madison, 100X, 100.5 FM, Wichita, that's Buzz's hometown, 98.7 KFH FM, Buffalo, 92.9 WBUF, and 6.50 AM, KIKK, in Houston, where you'll be getting the whole show in just... 36 days. Only 36 days? 36 days until the whole show gets aired in Houston. A month and a week. We've already missed all the good stuff today. Yes, they have. In Houston, you've already missed the fight with the guy from The Apprentice. Right. You've already missed the great Jew to Jew. Yes. Let's get to a phone scan. Why not? 877-365-3636. Um, this would be the point where I would normally tell you what's happening tomorrow on the show. Uh-huh. Uh, being as it went so good with the guy from The Apprentice, we've decided to scratch tomorrow's guest. Very good. Uh, I won't even tell you who that is or what that person was associated with. We have kind a of similar guest, though. We have a possibility of the panty protest, though. Oh, the panty protest in the Republic of the Angels of Eve. I will tell you this Thursday, live in studio, I'll be getting my hair cut by Ryan Seacrest, stylist. Dean Berkowitz is in town for American Idol. Wonder. You don't need it. <laughs> well, now, you recently... You mocked my caveman haircut. Right. I cut my own hair like <laughs> when we were on vacation two months ago. Right. 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 Since then, it's kind of grown in. It, it has. It, it, okay. I asked you in the office today. Was it today when or you yesterday? asked me, I was I, I you know I was looking at it and it looked like there's one area yeah that is jutting out a little bit that looks like you, you and it would be an area where if you cut, if you cut your own hair and I did that you which I think you know is amazingly difficult to do. I'm artistic. I can't wait to talk to this guy because as your former barber. I can offer him plenty. I, I believe that I am not qualified to come on anybody's hair today. Nonsense. Since the haircut that I received earlier today it's is, handsome, is like. approaching dumb and dumber quality. <laughs> yeah, know. but it doesn't cross the line. I'm cutting it shorter and shorter, and today I noticed the little Here's thing the in thing. the front. <laughs> it's very... Pardon me. <laughs> I'm giving a lecture at the college. <laughs> <laughs> That's who's coming in Thursday, Ryan Seacrest. Excellent. Stop. It's Dean Berkowitz. He's super. That's great. Phone scan. <laughs> and here we go. Anyway, he's going to cut my hair. Good. Uh, hi, Don and Mike show. You are on the air. Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, it's a phone scan. Yeah. Hi there. Hey, I just want to thank you guys for probably the funniest Jew to Jew ever. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we I, agree. I am a Gentile, and I was laughing my ass off. Thank Keep you, sir. Good work. Thank show you for everybody. Friend. Thank you very much. God, how pompous is that? Thanks for the best Jew to Jew ever. We agree. Goodbye. Thank you. You're right. <laughs> Hello, Don. I'm like you're you. right. And also, right. pretty good with the apprentice guy today. Pretty good fight with him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't want to sound like a kid in the candies in the uh, schoolyard. He started it. <laughs> Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike, Goldmar, Florida. I'll hang up and listen. <laughs> that must be. Is that a suburb of Tampa? I guess so. Hi, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Hey. Hey, I was wondering if you could start a pool. On how long? It's well, you, for you first, you'd have to find a nice big backyard, <laughs> <laughs> dig a hole, pour in the concrete, or just get an above ground pool. It's mm -hmm. quite an ordeal. Those are my favorites. Those are nice. No, can you start a pool on how long it's going to take for you to finish your bedroom, like you did your bathroom? Oh no, to finish the bedroom? No, see, th there was a real guy. There was a contractor that came came out and. Is that all done? Yeah, the bathroom. Yeah, like like completely done. It was done in just under four. months. Wow. That's just under four months. Is there anything special about it now? Are you enjoying anything that's... Uh, Do you like you know, the waterfall? Like, <laughs> like in the shower, does it have those jets that come from all different directions? No, it's just, it's a nice, it's a nice bathroom. How much do you pay the attendant? <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. Not in my show. You mean you don't have one that goes up there? What, the, a nozzle, you mean? Yeah, I thought it had one of those. Mm, yeah, no, sprays it's, upward. No, it's got one of those. From those, below? It's it's a shower, and then it's got the other thing next to it that's got the big long oh, thing the, on the it. Oh, the the handheld. Oh. Yeah, it's got that thing. Oh, okay. I thought I thought it was one of those showers that uh, you know you see in movies sometimes where it comes from twenty different directions. No, it's just it's a regular shower. Didn't American Psycho have a shower like that? I don't remember. I don't know why I brought that up. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was very gay. <laughs> when Christian Bale was in the shower scene. Not not necessarily gay. You know, <laughs> yeah. also you know troubling in a in that old. Yeah, I know. Got that, Rob? That way. Don Geronimo and Patrick Bateman. No. The Don and Mike Show. 
like Huey Lewis? <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike Show. Are you there? All right. Hi, Don and Mike Show. You're on the air. Phone, Hello. phone scan. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hold on. Are you doing the Larry thing? Hey. Is that what you're doing? Are you doing Larry? No. Hello. Oh, well. Yeah, he wasn't doing anything. Larry, no. did you like that guy? Nope. No. Huh, Snita? <laughs> what are you still in the mood for? Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Always. Hello. Don Mike Show. Hi, my name is Scott Peterson, and when I am not running up and down the coast from Modesto to Fresno... Hold on, listen, hold on, hold on, just before you... Hold on. Thank you. Hold on before you go any further. What town does your mom live in? I think he's already gone. He's already gone? He's gone. He had his prepared comedy. We'll send the care package to Horville. He had his agenda. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Where do our Busto Radio guys? Howdy, you're on the air. Yeah, Bakersfield checking in. And uh, I want to thank you, Don, for your new theory from last week. My wife and I enjoyed our anniversary this weekend. And upon completion... Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. What, what, the what? theory? Yeah, your theory about the uh, canines. Oh, oh, oh if, if all... Remember, my, it was a brief, brief... Uh, a fantasy, fantasy, really, more than anything. Uh, about if, if women... <laughs> We're oh, like, we're, we're like, like dogs. dogs. Like dogs. Yes, that's right. May I interject? Yes, sure. Please, please. Please. please, yeah, go ahead. And uh, upon completion, I broke out the water hose, and it worked perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Technically, is that a theory? May I interject? It's a fact. Hello. I thought it was more of a fantasy. Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey, Hello. Don and Mike. Yeah, it is a fantasy. And not a theory. That someday, well, listen, one day, it, a long time ago, it was a fantasy that we'd ever land on the moon. Mm -hmm. That's true. Ended up, ended up happening. And now we've immensed ourselves in Speaking it. Speaking of which. Everything old is new again, Rob. That's right. I was reading in uh, Sports Illustrated uh, an article about Chris Berman and about ESPN's 25th anniversary. Right. And... It repeats uh, something that uh, Chris Berman said on TV that was funny. I'm getting to the point about astronauts. I guess it was during the uh, the All Star game. Uh, they the lead story that night on Sports Center was Shaq being traded to the Miami Heat. Okay, right. right. So Chris Berman is with Joe Morgan where in Houston for the All Star game, and apparently his microphone was on while Stuart Scott or whoever said, Tonight on Sports Center, Shaq goes to Miami. And Chris Berman said on air, This is why I don't watch this show anymore. Because he thought Ooh. he thought that the baseball should be the lead story. Right. So wow. anyway, I I'm reading this thing about Chris good, Berman. And and incidentally good for Chris Berman. <laughs> <laughs> but but for every time where he says something like that, right. which slipped out on the air, mm -hmm. you got to read this to see how he's swimming in Lake Me. Oh yeah. Um, here they ask. Isn't him, he a huge baseball fan? They ask. Him, I think he's just a sports fan. But I think he, he's a he's a baseball fan because mainly he likes to go. Mac, 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 he's mac, a football mac. fan too, though, because right. like the whole Howard Cosell thing, you know, he could go all the way. Right. Anyway, his, here was his comment about being one of the original ESPN people. Mm. Right. Um, man, I wish I had the magazine. It was. We're like the Mercury astronauts. And I'm not sure which of them he said he was, but he said because he had been on Apollo uh, and Gemini. But he said he was Gus Grissom. You know, if anybody out there has got the, got the SI. <laughs> you got it, Joe? No, he's not looking for that. No, he's not looking for that. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Uh, I still at times, right before I fall asleep, wonder if I'm going to get up. I'm sorry, I thought that was the Joe thing. It was Joe just looking quickly. Joe, there he is. Yeah, I'm sorry, joking and looking for Windex. <laughs> so he basically compared himself as a sportscaster to somebody risking their life going up in a space. Yeah, ball, so. because yeah. it was. He said because I was with Mercury. I went through Mercury, Apollo, and whatever the third one was. Are you sure it wasn't comparing him trying to fit behind the desk versus trying to fit in the capsule? You know the thing about uh, Chris Berman and a lot of those guys, though, the, uh, you have to really think long and hard, a la Jerry Lewis, to come up with self-analysis that is so yeah. self-aggrandizing. The funniest part of the interview comes from a guy who does that so much. It comes from Keith Oberman. Oh, yeah. Who, you know, has problems with ESPN and got fired from ESPN. One of his quotes was that... Uh, of all of the people at ESPN, he thinks Chris Berman stinks the least. <laughs> wow. So Chris Berman said in response to that, tell him I said thanks, uh, that he likes me. Mm -hmm. And they went back to Keith Overman with that. And Keith Overman said, no, make it very clear. I don't like him. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, nice. of the people they have, he's yeah. acceptable. Back in those days, there were a lot of uh, you know egos you could photograph from the air at Any, Sports Center. <laughs> anybody got that? I'd lo I'd love to be able to give a, a tip in there to find out right. who the astronaut is that Chris Berman compared himself to. <laughs> good to know. Please at ESPN. I'm trying to think the Mercury astronauts. I watch the right stuff. I'm yeah, to, me you too. Got your John Glenn. It might be uh, you got your Shepard. Was Astra Shepard one? You got Alan Shepard. Alan Shepard. And you got uh, who's the guy that did the battery? Commercials. Oh, um, man, oh man! Uh, he, he wasn't yeah, an astronaut. Yeah, but he was a yeah, test yeah, pilot. Yeah, yeah, I know the guy. The guy that got in at the last second, Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager. Chuck the Yeager. guy who broke the speed of uh, sound. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeager Meister. Hello, Don and Mike. Show. Yeager Meister. Meister. Buzz. Buzz. Buzz took his funny pills. Buzz today. with the hip booze lingo. <laughs> Hello, this is the Don and Mike show. Hello. Did you attend the Floyd Fest in Floyd, Virginia, a couple weeks ago? Oh, they had it? The yeah. Floyd Fest? Ooh. Um, Floyd and Fest. You, could have, you could have seen a band on the Hill Holler stage. From Andy of Mayberry? <laughs> you want to talk about a place we could actually... Now he's gone. He's he's a a place that we could do the show from. Whoa, here we go. <laughs> Not in my show. Hello. Hey. Hey, you're call, on the air. Call from Western Maryland. Didn't know if anybody from Sharpsburg, Maryland had invited Rob to the uh, Klan rally this weekend. We'd love to have him. <laughs> Oh, my God. And the hits just keep coming. Hello, <laughs> Don and Mike show, phone scan. Hey, Don, what's up, buddy? Hey, hey. I called uh, yesterday and called your wife, Carmela. I had a uh, character Rob could play. He could play yeah, the guy. Uh, buddy, right. Called yesterday. Sorry. <laughs> Let's try to space out those calls. Hi, Don and Mike show. Ah, uh, boys, good to talk to you. Yeah, right on. How are you? We're fine. What can we do for you? Well, I think you need to change the show policy on, on the nickname. Uh, I mean, how many DJs make good careers with not using their real names? Hold on a second. Uh, wait, you're no, going to get, get philosophical on my ass. You're going to make yeah, me yeah. explain things to you. Now, now what, what is your point, sir? That he, I, I understand what he's saying. He doesn't like. We don't like callers that use nicknames. Yet disc jockeys use fake names. Well, there's Correct. a difference between a fake name and a nickname, though. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well. So yeah. you're hanging up on people, you know, just because they put in a big owl or a little tom. Or yeah, that's like that. right. Well, right. that's right. Yeah. We do it. You know what? Hold on a second. Rather than give you the lecture on how when I was coming up in the business, you know, everybody had a fake name, and right. I don't make a, a a secret about the fact that I do or Buzz does. Mm -hmm. But because I'd ask the could I ask the caller something though? Sure. I'd like to know. You know, if if we're not, what would be your suggestions on? You know. I, you know, we actually like to make the show better quite often, and I'd like to this caller's suggestions on, well, on how we can make you consider make the show better. Before you do that, though, right? I, I just want to go one step further, right? Oh, this is true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, are you still there? I'm here. Congratulations! You've been selected as a charter member in the Don and Mike Exclusive Listeners Club. Too nitpicky. You are now a registered Don and Mike caller and are entitled to all the privileges that come with said title. Right. Be sure to watch your mailbox for your registered Don and Mike caller sign, which is to be placed prominently in your front yard. You have been profiled, tagged, and you are now in the book. Good day. Good day, sir. I said good day, sir. Good day, sir. See you. Good day. Thank you, dude. What you don't get is that when we say that to somebody, it, we're just goofing. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, don't use the nickname. It's just yeah, I, I, as I said before, before you did that, before you put him in the book, even though he is in the book, mm -hmm. I would be curious. What's his number, Rob? I first need a name and a last initial. Okay. From this. It'd be Tim and S. Tim and S? nickname that's... S. S right. is in Sam. We understand. Thank you. And what number is he, Rob? Zero, 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 two, zero. <laughs> we have so we have, we have twenty. We twenty already. We have twenty people in the book. Yeah, but we've shown a long time. We've shown a lot of restraint. We wow. Have. Anyway, Mike. Yeah, I, I'm Don. I'm sorry because I forgot he was going to be put in the book. But I'm curious, how would you make the show better, sir? I don't know if it's just. <laughs> yeah, I get a little greedy about See, we that. We were both going to the uh -huh. same spot. You exactly. wanted to cut him right off. Yeah, I wanted to put him in the book first. Absolutely. But how nice! He, everyone got to have fun. Everybody got I a little even bit got of to say my zeros. Everybody got to do what they like. Hello. We should use our real names, though, shouldn't we, Mike? I think so, Mike. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. How about you, Mike? I'm all down with that, Mike. Uh, what about you, Mike? I'm fine with that. Hi, Rob. <laughs> I feel you're fired. I'm such an ass. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. <laughs> Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, how you doing? What type of phone are you talking to us on? <laughs> Bad one. I guess we're not going to be able to find that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Hello, Hello, Don and Mike show. Phone scan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm calling from a pay phone. I'm in a VA hospital. <laughs> a 
Hey, fantastic. I called for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, Don and Mike, you guys have earned the right to call yourselves anything you want, so the hell with that guy. Thank you. All yeah. right? Yeah. You paid your dues, man. Right. And uh, Did you say you're in a V8 hospital? Yeah, I am. Is that where you only drink V8 juice? So. Oh, no, no. It's V8. Yes, a oh, veteran oh, hospital. Virginia. Oh, I, I, I thought it was like a, a place where you went if you didn't get enough vegetables. No. <laughs> Thank you for your service to our country, yes. sir. Thank you for recognizing it. Are you are you fresh uh, out of the military, or are you uh, you know engaged in something else? Why are you there? Well, I'm here now. I'm, no, I, I was. Uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm here now for uh, waiting on a liver transplant. Wow. Oh, really? Well, oh, good welcome, luck with that. Welcome home. Rob's pointing to his head. You don't have any mental issues, do you? None at all. All right, that's okay. that's that's a good thing. Are you going to get your liver? Uh, well, we don't know. You know. I'm on the waiting list. That's all I can say. Mike, you could give up your spot. <laughs> you know. I'm taking about 18 pills a day, you know. Really? Yeah, that happens. Well, <laughs> hey, it keeps me alive. I hope you don't mind, sir. I've got to keep my spot on the list, okay? Oh, that's cool. No problem. <laughs> when you get your new liver, are you going to start redoubling your drinking? No, I'm not. <laughs> Good for you. I'm not going to pull a Mickey Mouse. Good, good man. Good man. Good luck. Oh, by the way, what I called for is to see if I could play phone scam. And also, um, I wanted to say that uh, play phone during scam. my drinking days, uh, I had been plucked from society for uh, things that, uh, that I did. And I didn't get to hear you guys where I was. And uh, it sounds to me, are we talking about imprisonment? We yep. are, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, and you straightened your life out? I have, sir. And, and, then, you're, and then you're... Thanks to V8 juice. And then you're living Thanks fair. to V8 juice. You know, man, isn't that amazing? I mean, you, you, you can't fly straight, and uh, you go into jail, and you finally get out, you get your life together, and then your liver goes bad. Well, you know, I mean, you know, you, you play the card you dealt, sir. Yeah, yeah but isn't drinking fun? Uh, well, I had a great time. I thought I had a bud in my hand. Bud is great with V8. <laughs> All right, we got to go. Okay, I can't play phone scam? Well, you're playing it right now, you sir. Just play you, it. you, you played just well. Done with it. I was going like, to call somebody and lie to them. You guys used to do that. No, yeah. we, we don't yeah. play phone That's scam That's back anymore. when you were drinking. Oh, yeah, well, you know, the, you know, those days were a little hazy. Well, in, enjoy yeah. your, your time in the hospital. Okay. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye. Don't you remember you'd play phone scam when monkeys flew out of his radio? Hello, Don, <laughs> Don and Mike show. Hello. 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 Holiday. Hey, Holiday. Hey, hey, hello. Hi. Sexy lady on the phone. <laughs> Hi, I was just calling because I'm 20 and I got to go back to college. And I was wondering if you had any, uh, if you were on in Princess Anne or near Salisbury. Yeah, we're on a station there called 96 Rock, honey. Oh, thanks. So I can, uh, I can die a happy woman now. Yeah, have a good time. Go back to school. Do what you do at school. Yeah, you. You like Eat all the guys on the team. You like being a co-ed? <laughs> yes, I do. Mm -hmm. What's uh, what's your name, educated lady? They call me Mia. Yeah, well, you know what? Mia. 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 You know what? It's almost train time. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, ride the train. <laughs> Mia. I'm wearing my clear bracelet just for you, baby. All right. Well, thanks I for calling us. We I'm appreciate like... it, FM. I'm going to look that up. No problem. <laughs> I, I... And just so I'm straight, FM is. Fat me up. Yes. And you know, I don't think so. who knows? I, I don't either. She was probably Rob wrote like, it down for me. She was me, probably but I like heroin skinny, it, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think she was well, thin. No matter what her weight was, it was an extreme. Yes, I promise you that. Mm -hmm. But you got to admire the clear bracelet she was talking about wearing. Yes. According to this, it means your choice. Really? Your choice of what? Anything? Yeah. Anything goes. Anything no. goes. Mm -hmm. The choice might be don't call back. Hello. <laughs> Don and Mike show. Hello. The choice is use protection. This is the phone scan. <laughs> Triple your tiger. parents should have used protection. Hello? See, if your parents had used protection, I wouldn't be saying hello right now. Hello? You would have picked up the phone. Never mind. We'll take somebody else. Hi, Donna Mike Show. Hi, guys. How are you guys doing today? We're doing very well, thank you. Hey, Mike, are you still single? Yeah, I am, as a matter of fact. Are you? Oh, yeah, baby. Hey. Really? Uh, yeah, we got a real homo here. What's your name? My name is Zachariah. 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 Yeah. All right. Well, it's yeah. good to hear from you, FZ. Ah! Yes. Yeah. I was wondering. <laughs> now, how do you know he's fat? He's not. <laughs> fat Zachariah. I don't think he is. FZ. <laughs> really? Hello, Don I'm and trying Mike to think show. of fat, famous gay guys. Hello, Don and Mike show. It's really hard to who? Bruce Valance. Bruce Valance. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> hey, Rob, a little too quick on that. <laughs> and they're really beating the odds. Yeah, they are. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, oh, absolutely. Bruce Valance. Hello. Mm. Don and Mike show. 
Hello? Oh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Just hang up. Hello, this is the Don and Mike show. Too quick on that. Turn down your radio. They're really deep. Turn down your radio. Oh, absolutely. Turn down your radio. Don and Mike show. Christ. Hello? Idiot. <laughs> Oh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Just hang up. Hello, this is the Don and Mike show. Turn down your radio. <laughs> Turn down your radio. <laughs> Why do we find that funny? Because we like hearing ourselves on the radio. <laughs> we do. We never get to hear ourselves on the air. No. We're really idiots that way. Though. Oh. Seriously. John and I, you should have seen us just then if there had been a TV camera in here. <laughs> we heard ourselves like really clearly through that phone connection, and Don and I were just looking at each other grinning. <laughs> Isn't that neat? We're on the radio. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Hi there. Um... I'd really like to hear Judah Chu interview Dr. Neil Clark Warren. Oh, wouldn't we, too? <laughs> well, only if the topic was pedophilia. <laughs> of course, that's just my opinion. Yes, and you could be wrong. <laughs> About Dr. Neil Harris, I'm sure he does it. So did you make a lot of money on that website putting singles together? <laughs> hey, Larry? Have you heard about Dr. Neil Clark uh, Warren? Well, have you heard about him? Yes. Yep. What's he like? Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Don and Mike. Hold on. What's he doing tonight? Dr. Neil, what's his name? Neil Clark Warren. Michael Jackson tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Hello. Larry. Don and Mike show. Hello, Don and Mike. Yes, hello. This is the phone scan. Hi. How are you today? We're doing very well, thanks. Hey, I got a lot in common with Mike, Don. Well, hey, I'm right here, sir. Now, hold on a second. You know what's trouble to me, sir? Yes. What's trouble to me is when I'm sitting here, and I can hear you, and you begin to have a conversation with Don. I just want to say, warning. And, I, and Mike, can I help it? I'm so beloved. I know. You know, uh, uh, all you've seen all of the research that's come back. But it sounds <laughs> like a zinger's coming my way. You've seen all the research that they've done. But it's Who okay. Who do you like better? I can take well, it. I can take it. Don is so nice and so easygoing. Mm -hmm. And you Mike, with his awful attitude and temper. But I'm ready. To, I'm ready to take the zinger for the team because you took the herpes bullet earlier. Hey, the sir. <laughs> listen, why don't, why don't we just cut Mike out of this? Why don't you just talk to just me? I'll sit over on the side. Go ahead. Just talk to me. What would you like to say to Mike? All right, hey, Mike, you got to shut up for a minute. I'm trying to talk to Don. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna sit over on the side. What would you like to say to me? I I've got a lot. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that, smart guy? That's friendship. Hello, Don and Mike show. What I'm gonna leave Mike hanging like that? Right. Thank you, buddy. Jeez, I don't want to hear anything that idiot had to say. <laughs> Thank you, P O M. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, Don and Mike, love the show, man. Thank, Thank you. you. I just want to say, Rob could play the uh, the guy in the Sopranos in the uh, parking lot with the security guard. Hey, the ball spot. That was a discussion from yesterday. Oh, about who would be who on the Sopranos? Yeah. <laughs> Rob would be the guy in the car. <laughs> security guard. What? Okay. Now we need to get the name. Because you know somebody's got... Do you know the name? Vito, isn't it? I, I don't know if it's Vito. I'm not sure. Hello, what? One of my favorite lines this year is when he said, Tony said, there's still the matter of you throwing a sandwich at Vito. This must be resolved. Oh, Vito. Vito, Vito Spiewak. Hello. Don and Mike show. Hi. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, hi, you're on the air on the phone scan. Hey, buddy. I said you're on the air with the phone scan. Go ahead, sir. Hey, Hello. we're not your buddy now. What can we do for you? Why isn't there any pictures of uh, BA on the website? Oh, you are killing me with this stuff. You're killing me. Hello, Don and Mike show. Yes, Mike, how is your head? How is my head? Yeah, how is your head these days? <laughs> my head, like, psychologically, sir? Yes, sir, please. Oh, you know, it's where it has been the last two years or so. It's just, you know, every day it's a different emotional roller coaster. It's a scrambled egg. It sure is. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike, how are you guys doing? Hi there. Hey, couple things here. Yes, sir. Uh, for Don, I just wanted to say that I totally agree with you. I've been married for 14 years, and all of a sudden I got this we don't spend time together thing. Uh, listen, this is something uh, that every couple, God knows, mm -hmm. Rita's done this on the show. I mean, I've mentioned it on the show. We've been together 23 years. Maybe the first time I heard it was on our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not kidding you. Wow. It's just like a refrain every once in a while, mm -hmm. you know. You like doing what you like doing, and anything that you like doing is something I don't like doing. But, you know, what the hell? But you know what I started doing? We love each other. Let me just mention that. That's we love each other. That's a good and, thing. And I can, I can announce again today. 
It's yet another day she hasn't left me yet. That's terrific. <laughs> Contract oh, renewed. That's right. Uh, anyway, what else? I said what I what I started doing is everyone's every time we're together, I simply say, "Does this count, <laughs> or does it not count?" That might not be a good idea. Yeah, that would not work. That would not work with my sweet lady. That works with mine. That's too sassy for most of them. That's well, yours is uh, yours is not as. Um, <sighs> Uh, not as wonderful as mine. Uh, maybe. That's also, nice one last thing. Yes. Could you put me in the Buzz fan club, by the way? You mean the Buzz fan club? The Buzz yeah. fan club? I think Buzz is like evil, and I don't know why, but it's just that when I listen to you guys, mm -hmm. there's an evil, mean streak to Buzz. Oh, you're, you know yeah. what? Here's Now, this is a perceptive caller, yeah. Yeah. and I'll tell you where you sure. find it. You know where you find it? All those things where he said, hey, I don't want to alarm you. Mm -hmm. When he says things like that, yeah. he is delighted to alarm you. You know, because Buzz would be the guy in the lifeboat, all right? And the water would be coming in, and Buzz would jump up because he'd be the first person to see the sharks. <laughs> and he'd delight in telling the rest of the boat they're right over there. Look, sharks! And I mentioned that because I saw that movie Open Water last night, so I got sharks on the brain. Oh. And also, it doesn't manifest itself very often, but Buzz hates children. Yes. He do, no, yes. that is, yes. that is yes. a fact. Thank you, Rob. Yep. More, fact, more yeah. evidence of his evilness. He hates children because he can't have them. any kids and he hates well, strollers. That's true, and <laughs> perhaps I'm bitter, but I don't hate them. <laughs> so he's like the guy from Chi Chi Bang Bang wearing around with the... Uh... Yes! <laughs> yes! Children! <laughs> where are the children? <laughs> bang Bang, Chi Chi Bang Bang, we love you. Do, do. Candy, sweets, sweets for the children. <laughs> and then he pulls the thing off the big cage and he puts the kids in the Cage, the scariest kids villain in the movies. Michael Elton as the children. <laughs> what, uh, what is your name? It is Ken. And Ken, where are you from? <laughs> Buffalo. Right on. 92.9 WBUF. Oh, here you go. Ken's a good caller. I'm, I'm glad he's getting the prizes. It's a good prize. Uh, being the last person on the phone scan, you've won a box set here. The first season of HBO's Da Ali G Show oh. on DVD. It's a great show, and it's courtesy of HBO. It's a box set. Please enjoy Enjoy, my friend. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for listening, and good luck training your wife. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, fellow evildoer. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. All right, hold on, I mean. Hold, okay, no hold problem. On, hold on for your prizes, please. Um, next, I'm not sure. Stay tuned. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Our enemies are innovative and resourceful, and so are we. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people. And neither do we. No, he's not retarded. Well, the Don and Mike Show. Broadcasting live from downtown Dumbass. Hi. The Don and Mike Show. Here's the thing. When I said I don't know what we have coming up in this break, I just was handed something. I knew this might happen at some point during the show today. Uh, we're not going to get to these games. We'll play one of these games tomorrow because I've been told that there's that special microphone at the White House. Oh, really? That we're going to get a special one-on-one -on -one radio address that uh, W is very happy with our show. For whatever reason, let me... Uh... I we got a better connection. Hello, George. The um, W? Barbecue sandwich. And Hello, W. Extra hush puppy. W. Put in my... W. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hold on a second. Is this Don? Yeah, hey, W. How are you? W. It's great. It's great to great to hear from you. I just want yeah barbecue sandwich, no slaw, extra hush puppies and uh and a and a peanut coke. Can we clean that thing up? <laughs> How are you? Yeah, yeah, I, you coming? I can't hear you. Can we clean that up? Double U. Howdy. Double U. Got the line from this is the line from Crawford. There you go. Hold on and hold this wire clear. Yeah, it's good to hear from you. How, how you doing, son? Um, as I'm, always, I'm glad to have you on my show. I'm kidding you. I know you're doing the show. Uh, but Mr. I'm Bush, so please, you, you made me laugh. I, I heard a tape, man. Oh, what was it, sir? You yeah, had that tape of a, <laughs> at the John Kerry thing you did the other. Oh, I know oh, when Mike man. did the impression. Man, that's the funniest damn thing I ever heard in my life. I just want to say something serious, yeah. if I could, before we talk about the the jokes that you made at uh, Senator Kerry's expense, which I found delightful. Mm -hmm. This is a te terribly difficult time in our world. I can't, I can't stop thinking about that thing he did. Where he's got a big long face. <laughs> Man, that's so good. You know, a lot of comedians have found a great deal of comedy <laughs> at my expense. Yes, have but they? it is I've refreshing. Not, not heard about that. that. It is refreshing to know that certain comedians are trying to have fun at John Kerry's expense. 
because he is very. He, you captured the essence of it. Hey, did and you hear the fact that he is funny looking and he looks like human monster? <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny. I love that show, The oh, Monsters. <laughs> did you ever watch that growing up? I watched that oh, in Texas when I was, uh, you know, when I was trying to work in the oil business. I used to watch. A, I, I basically have a three or four bourbons. And, you know, snort a line and, and just watch the monsters all you know, day long. You know who Tom Gavin is, right? That that, uh, that that trainable you got on your show. Right. Yeah. You know what his favorite show is? Which one? The Monsters. Which, what show's that? It's a show that he calls The Monsters. What do you mean he calls my, you know, Monsters? No. You know who his favorite character on that show is? Uh, human. Human Monster. Yeah. But, but you, know, you know what his real name is? What is it? Herman Munster. Not where I grew up. Huh. You're wrong about that, son. I, I just like the way you... Hey, let's cut through all the details. I don't want right. to waste my time with all this you know, detail stuff. It's a funny show. It's black and white, right? You know, it was a good show and it was good. I, I just laughed out loud when you were talking about him with his, uh, you know, squiggly hair and his bolts in his neck. Man, I tell you, I told, I told Laura, man, you got to listen to this. And she, she, you know, of course, like everything else, she was offended by it. Yeah. Uh, but I, but I thought it was good. Can I get serious for a second again? Hey, I saw your dog doing a crap the other day when you were walking out. Dog's a prop. I'd like to use it like the football. <laughs> I swear to God, I'd like to just kick it. I'd like to kick it between the uprights. I just don't care for it. But they said, you know, you're present, have a dog, you know, and let's get one that looked like uh, whoever that guy was during World War II, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. He, uh, you know, the president during the war. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of who Yeah, they said, have a Teddy dog, Roosevelt a dog like that, it'll make you look more presidential. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, that's fine. I don't mind that. But we, we live in tough times. Right. Stop this crap with me. It's very, very. You're talking difficult. with me I know now. I'm talking with you. I'm just. I have to keep it serious, right? right. I'll lose it. I just want to know. Um, I, I, can I say a special and thank not you? to be, not not to be nitpicky, and I'm the right. last person in the world that would remember something like that. Right, right. I think it was FDR. That had the, I think it was Franklin. Franklin Roosevelt. No. That had the dog. Franklin. Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt. All right. Uh, Roosevelt. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. FDR. No, he was he was a founding father. No, he wasn't. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Delano came before the the the, the Declaration of No, uh, no, 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 no. The Declaration he's, of of uh, of Const He's the guy that was in the wheelchair. Yeah, listen, we could do this all night, but you're going to. He's make the guy right that here. was in the wheelchair, and, and uh, most of America never knew he was in a wheelchair. No, the the guy that was in the wheelchair was uh was uh was Wellington, President Wellington. I think. Oh, I'm Wellington. confused. Don't remember. Uh, you mean like Beef Wellington? Is there a Z in any of the names? <laughs> a Z in the name? Like president? Franklin Z. Roosevelt. <laughs> All right. No. no. You're, you're, no. Look, God, don't play I'm, this. I'm positive it wasn't right, Teddy Roosevelt. Roosevelt. You're, you're beginning to behave like the intellectual elite. And I'm offended. No, I'm stupid, but even uh, I know that it's not Teddy I, Roosevelt. I am your president. Remember who you're speaking to. It's important for you to know that. I just want to say one thing. Yeah. I will win this election, and I have very, very explosive news about my opponent. About John Kerry? That mm -hmm. some of my friends, my friends have released. There are several organizations around me. We have Swift Boat Veterans for Truth. Now, listen, let's... let's and I'm going to have mental health professionals for truth. And there's something I got. I got lots of good dirt. Now, mm. Man, this is great stuff. This is going to sink them. You're, wow. you're behind that, right? Oh, yeah. 100%? <laughs> <laughs> you doggone right I am. Man, I'll tell you right now, just come out and say, you know, he, he cut himself. That's that's the idea. I said, hey, get a purple heart, say he cut himself. You know, it'll, it'll deflect things. That's the way we do it. But I'll tell you, we're having some fun with this next one. You know, this is what I did in some of my other campaigns. Okay, well, what's next? We are going to have a commercial come out, Mental Health Professionals for Truth, <laughs> that have analyzed the center from Massachusetts and have determined that he is insane. Wow. He is a kook. He's a nut job. And, man, that's it. It's going to kick me over the top, son. I don't mind telling you. It's great. You see, Americans do not like a crazy man to lead them. <laughs> well, re really, we don't. They do not want a crazy man. They seem to have liked it for the last 40 years. I'm falling pretty well in the crazy department. You don't see anybody say, I know that I have my limitations, and I know that I am not exactly labeled as a deep thinker. But I'll tell you something. <laughs> it's real exciting to know exactly what we're going to do. All right, let's because see how smart you are. We in this country will not ever elect a crazy man. Now, I know and that... Four in five citizens perceive John Edwards to be silly. Mm. <laughs> and they, they don't know. like silly or crazy. Guess, guess who's in the studio with me? You can't see right now because you're in Crawford and I'm in D.C. All right. Guess who's in here with me? 
what do you got there? Let's see if you can guess by his voice. All right. Okay. Hello. Hello, this is George Bush. Who's this? I'm Larry of the Corner. Oh, Larry. Larry King. Yes. How are you, sir? It's a good okay. Thing. It's good to hear from you. I'm, uh, I've been very busy, and I, I look forward to the opportunity when we can chat a bit about uh, some of the things that are coming up in the upcoming election and the issues. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, no, I'm not kidding. I'm looking forward to What are you talking about? Um, nope. He's talking not nonsense. Uh, Don, you got him there in your studio. What's it? Why is he? Why, why is he being this way? I, hello, Larry. Can you? The talk? only thing I worry about is dying. Oh, Larry, I don't. You don't need to worry about dying. You're a fine journalist, and I think you've done a great job. I admire. It's unbelievable. You. It's not unbelievable. I, I am. I admire you, sir. I'm curious. I want to know why. Why? It's a question we can. Why? Is a question we can all ask ourselves each and every day, Larry. And uh, I would like to answer it, but I do not have the materials to answer that at this time. You were not born. You were made in a toy factory. <laughs> Larry, are you okay? I I'm getting a distinct vib vibration here that you might not be all right. I don't know. That's my three words. I don't know. Well, I don't know either, Larry. Uh, sometimes not. Sometimes. Why is he? Uh, I don't know. I don't either, Larry. I'm trying to answer. I want to see it all. Uh, okay. Uh, well, yeah, I can't oh, show boy. A boy? A boy. A boy about what? Hands down, Michael Jackson. Larry, you're talking crazy. You're, you're a crazy man. I hope you, have, you don't have that thing that former President Reagan had. Come on. Forget it. Come on, forget what, Larry? <laughs> Larry seems to have some sort of difficulty communicating. I'd love to do an interview with Larry, but I'm trying to... Because it, it's an area of my life I... Uh, what? I haven't done well with... What area are you talking about, Larry? I'm not sure. I can't follow this. This is confusing. You're president. I like the, the climate. I like the people. I like the entertainment world. What are you talking about, Larry? I am confused. And it no. Is... No what? Damn it. If I knew I'd live this long, I'd take better care of myself. All right, now hold on just a second. You're talking gibberish, and you're all over the road, and I'm trying to understand exactly what you're talking about, Larry. This universe has been around a long time, yeah. and it's going to be around a long time. I and I'm so. here for a blip of it. Well, we agree, and uh, thank, thanks to our Lord, we will be here for a long time. You were not born. You were made in a toy factory. Larry, that is blasphemy. I was I was created by, like everybody was created in the image of God. Probably, yes. Thank you. I'm glad you see the light, Larry. I appreciate that. And uh, I read the obituaries every day. Look at the ages of the people that died. Now, Larry, I don't think we need to get down on our, ourselves like that. You know, I, I, I often Larry. ponder this. What is too much? What is too much? Uh, too much is this negative campaigning that I'm getting tired of, and I'm not going to condemn specific ads, Larry, but I will tell you that I'm not happy with the way this soft money that's coming from big contributors is contributing to the contribution of the contribute. I was in South Africa, and I'm walking down the street, and a guy comes out of like a hut. Larry, you're not listening to me. I'm trying to make points. No. Well, why aren't you listening to me? I, thought, hurt. I didn't mean to hurt you. Larry. Back to life. A fact of life. It was funny. It was funny. You, Larry, damn it, now you're making me angry. <laughs> hey, George. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Well, so why is he talking gibberish like that? It's a computer. What do you mean it's a computer? It's not Larry King. I've got... That was his voice. No, oh. I've got 50 different tapes. Well, you're playing tapes? Yeah. You're doing a practical job. For instance, yeah. listen to this. Yeah. Now, now watch. You can't see anything, right? All right. I'm, I'm here. Say hello. Hello. Who are you? I'm Larry. Larry King? I'm Larry of the Corner. Do you swear to tell the truth? Yes. The whole truth? Yes. Nothing but the truth? Yes. So you had like a tape recorder there? Yes. Well, you can't play it out of, out of a computer. <laughs> you play it out of a tape, right? The magic tape? Well, no, it's a, it's digital. It's, uh, you know, I don't want to sit here and try to, you know, figure out what you're Larry? doing. Larry? You, you, hello? Are you going to vote for George Bush? You know... Oh, that's not good. I tell you, none of that's good. Now, Are you going to vote again. for John Kerry? Probably yes. What's the one picture that George Bush doesn't want to get out? George Bush and what? Oh boy! All right, that's quite enough. I understand what you're talking. <laughs> I know it's like a phonograph, right? <laughs> it's like a high five. Yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're doing. Hey, listen, here's a message for you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. We all need it. Anyway, that was just, yeah. that's a fake tape. Thing. I understand. I understand. But we fooled you with that, you right? You got me hook, line, and sinker. And speaking of that, I look forward to going up to the Mamos and Daddy's place where I can fish for bluefish. Mm -hmm. I'm on Daddy's big boat. I am looking forward to that. Daddy's still proud of you? Fishing is something that takes my mind away from the troubles of the day. What are your troubles today? My troubles today are many, and the weight of them has descended upon the president. That is why I spend my time in Crawford, 
pulling up bushes. How many <laughs> even lovely bushes that are a very very lovely bush to the property? <laughs> How many grilled cheese sandwiches have you enjoyed today? I have enjoyed four, <laughs> two at breakfast time, and one at lunch time. And if my lovely wife is a man amenable, if she if she wants me to, yeah, I will enjoy two more at supper time. Wow, so it'll be, it'll a, be a six toasted cheese sandwich day. Now is My that favorite sandwich. With crust or without? That's with, without crust, of without course. Without crust. Only in Crawford, Gordon, just the way I like them. I have Cook make me a delicious cheese sandwich without the crust toasted in butter. It is so delicious. Only American cheese and only Kraft single slices. Mm -hmm. They are so delicious with a big glass of milk. <laughs> Nothing makes your president happier. <laughs> toasted cheese sandwiches, cus crust cut off, big glass of milk, too bad, what a day. <laughs> you know, um, John Kerry, who Mike did the impression of last week? Yeah, I thought I thought that was the funniest thing I've ever heard on your show, son. I enjoyed that. I really did. I didn't mention what I top it all off with. Oh, oh what? Oh, oh, Sarah uh, Lee Browning. <laughs> <laughs> with the frosting? Oh, oh yeah. after all, after yeah. the six grilled yeah. cheese sandwiches? Yeah. I like it so much. One time I bit into the foil. <laughs> that hurt my teeth. Yeah. It's very difficult. <laughs> Have you ever bitten into foil? I've been, I've been, Man, hold that on. can hurt you, son. That's a, that's a tough hold thing. On. Yes. Uh, the hotline's ringing. All right. Give me a moment. Hello? Hotline. Who could this be? Yeah. He's here. Oh. Who is, who is it? You have to call him in uh, Crawford. It's for you, Mr. President. You have to call him yourself. I can't put him on the line now. Can we transfer? I don't have a phone. I mean, he's in Texas. What is, hey, what's your phone number there in Texas? Five 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 five. That's the code right now. Five five five. What is it again? Five 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 five. That's the code. What do you have to dial to get out? Is it five? Five. Okay. Press the pound key. Okay. Bye. Yeah. All right. You too. I know. <gasps> I misspoke. I, no, I, I don't understand when they say press the pound key. Press the tic-tac-toe key. Yes. I think your mom's going to be calling you. Mama, does she know I'm on the show? She's listening. <sighs> Hold on a second. I want this to be heard. Hello. Mama. Yes, I know. I like his show. <laughs> it is not. It is. No, it isn't. He doesn't talk that way anymore. They're not doing that. <laughs> They don't have those people on the show anymore. <laughs> I know you didn't like that. The newsman did do that. He did put that on his face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, but I, so, Mamo, ma, ma, Mamo, I don't. I, I like him. I like him. He understands me, and he is a football fan. <laughs> Please don't allow me to go on the program. I know what I'm doing. I do not. He does not make me out the fool, Mamo. <laughs> it is okay. Mamo, I love you so much, but you are making me angry. <laughs> oh, she must have said something you, awful. You cannot do that to me. Oh, my. Well, I'll go out and buy my own cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I will buy my own cheese and make my own sandwiches. I'm more than capable. <laughs> oh, really? I know I did burn myself that one time, but I will make my own toasted cheese sandwiches. You cannot buy... Mama, please let me go on his show. He makes me laugh. He is a funny man. <laughs> No, there are not. Mama, no. No one is naked today. <laughs> there are not naked people. Tell her we don't do any of the sex stuff anymore. Mama, they... I can't say that word. They don't do any of the girl-boy stuff anymore. <laughs> they don't, Mama. <laughs> yes, I know he did. I will tell... I know you don't like You know, I bet we're going to lose the right, transmission. Mama, I got to go. Oh, we're running I got to go. go. Goodbye. Satellite time is... She doesn't yeah. like you, and she said she most importantly doesn't like that boy you work with. That did the, the the voice of her making her sound like a man. Oh, Mike, yeah. All upset and her wow. skin is jiggling like crazy. <laughs> I got a, I got a scoot, son. All right, I know you got important yeah. presidential stuff oh, to do. Oh, five after six. What? That's five past five past toasted cheese. <laughs> Thank you, President Bush. Oh, now I'm gonna play with my army men. There he goes. W. Bye bye. That would be exclusive. Ah. And let me just see. Are we gonna lose him or? I love my army, man, and my toasted cheese sandwiches on my ranch and crawfish. I am the president of the United States.
Is that his mommy calls him up? Uh, she hates and this tells show. Him what's happening. She does not want him to come on this show now. But that, you know, that's where when we went to break, someone came to me before the last break and said Bush is going to want to talk because he loves the Carrie bit. He loved the Carrie bit, and he likes the show. He really does. And he likes grilled cheese. He loves it, especially with the crust cut off. Six a day, mm -hmm. and then the Sara Lee Brown. Well, he's on vacation. In a world where owning a radio was strictly forbidden, one man found a way to bring good news to his people. There he is. It's me. He made it up. There he is. <laughs> Pulling up bushes. With, uh, <laughs> with a look at the, uh, the news and the comments, Buzz Gurley, what is your lead story tonight? Today, ladies and gentlemen, the star of the Republican convention... Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah! Hi. Well, that'll make that tool from uh, the, the, the Apprentice happy. Yeah, I forget his name yes. already. Right. Uh, me and the rest of the country. Side of, same name as the Vice President, I think. Stay tuned <laughs> for news and comments yeah, coming yeah. up on the Don and Mike Show. Clever, huh? With an A in front of it. <laughs> a, right, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, that was very... Professional. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. Ready to pick you up and shake you in a figure eight. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. All right, time for Buzz's news and comments now. Buzz, uh, Buzz, Buzz brought to you by Smoke Break. This is good smoke. Smokers? Uh, hey, this is Keith. Yeah, the riches <laughs> the Don and Mike. Smokers break the nasty habit without gaining weight. Smoke Break, revolutionary tablet for smokers. Get it now at fine uh, retailers. Uh, hey, this is Keith. Yeah, the riches to Don and Mike. You got it? You got it. You got it. You wrong, Mike. Right. Joe. Hey, that's for you, Joe. I know you love the show. All right. And now here's Buzz. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. The guy we know in our hearts we should all be listening to from the Republican convention is John McCain, but he won't be on network TV. Arnold Schwarzenegger will. Uh, the networks also won't cover the speech by a man you got to respect for 9-11, even if you disagree with his politics. Who's that? Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani. Giuliani's not going to be in prime time? No, but that's really the Arnold part. Also appearing in prime time, Vice President Dick Cheney and Laura Bush. Yeah? For the other speeches, you'll have to rely on the cable news junkie channels. The networks say that when they do carry more convention coverage, nobody watches. So what you're saying is Rudy Giuliani doesn't get the FaceTime. He's out. Uh, that, that's just astounding. But Arnold McCain Schwarzenegger. Out. Schwarzenegger on TV. <laughs> Speaking for the future of the Republican Party. Very wow. wow. Yeah. Astounding, isn't it? <laughs> you know, Rob, I don't think we've ever listened to your collection of German music this far in. <laughs> Maybe someday. Yeah. <laughs> I say to everyone here today and to all Californians, my oath and you. I think I speak. I think I speak for anybody in the business, though. Arnold being in prime time. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank it's you. It's the greatest. We'll we'll get two breaks at least out of his speech. His hair will be so dark red for this. <laughs> Absolutely. See if you can see the gray in Arnold's hair. Oh my god. Oh yeah, my god. Oh my god. And he's so excited about all this. Oh what? my god. The thing is, it's going to be great, and I'm looking for it. Fluid to the big speech. <laughs> One of the closest key states in this very close presidential race is Florida, where the president's brother is governor. Uh, Kerry has actually led the race in Florida for a bit. Now Bush has a two-point lead there again, but it's still a statistical tie. In Pensacola, Florida, Bush country, hundreds of yard signs for John Kerry have been stolen. Stolen and vandalized, several hundred of them. One lady says her carry sign was stolen four times until she hung it in a tree 15 feet in the air, along with a sign that read, Nice people don't steal and vandalize. Northwest Florida is full of military bases and veterans and Republicans. I like to say something about the uh, not only political signs, uh -huh. which I find annoying. Yeah, they um, are. But even the ones that say, like, uh, you know, 
Want to lose 20 pounds in 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. Call this number to find out right, how. Right, right. Uh, you know, uh, and always the big ones, mm -hmm. uh, fill dirt. Is that they've either got, you know, fill dirt that they want to get rid of or they need fill dirt. Everybody goes out and just puts signs up everywhere. The best signs just say free dirt. Right. Free dirt. <laughs> no. Sign, sign, everywhere a sign. Yep. Work at home. Well, and also the story that was out a few weeks ago is that, uh. Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the signs? Cars with the uh, carry bumper stickers were vandalized. Yeah. Right. That, that's happened. That's mm -hmm. actually happened to one of my cars. Yeah. It's me too. Back. I swear to God, I am not lying. Local police promised to keep an eye I'm out. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, why would you do it, Don? So it was you. <laughs> you know, it's, so every day it's carry, carry, right. carry. I know, and you just carry, got... carry, 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 carry. Well, you we didn't think you were on camera when you did both of those. <laughs> we, we saw you. In fairness, the Republicans will no doubt face their share of grief at the convention. A women's rights group called the Axis of Eve is planning a big protest there on September 1st. Oh, are these people for tomorrow's show? That's right. Yeah, right. We're going to have these people on tomorrow. Yeah. Now, the group says hundreds of women wearing underpants that carry anti-Bush slogans will en masse flash those panties for 10 minutes at the Good convention. Good heaven. No. Yeah, so it should give onlookers time to read the litany of delightful double entendres that, under the current government climate, we're just not comfortable repeating. <laughs> baby. So make up your own and make them good and dirty. Hello, baby. So we'll have them on the show tomorrow? Yes. They, they, they only have assumed names, so it's hard to communicate with them. <laughs> wow. Anyway, so the, the thought is they're at the convention. Uh -huh. They all pull up their dresses at the same time. Right. You know, much like, you know, we've been to the Super Bowl where they say, right, uh, in between the quarters, mm -hmm. no, attention fans, yes. you are an important part. If you'll look under your seat cushion, you will see a giant placard. A big red square. When we say red, everybody hold up the red placard. <laughs> you know, like a moron, you're in the stadium. This will be better, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But because in the stadium, the problem is you hold up your sign, and it never gets on TV. No. They, they never get the effect that they're looking for with all the mooks in the stadium. I hope the Axis of Eve don't end up yelling red. <laughs> oh, oh, Rob. Oh. Well, I don't know how it's organized. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> From our Homeland Insecurity Department, how is there still brown out? Oh, oh, I, mean, I, hope, I, I hope that the electrical system is intact. <laughs> That's true. And they won't chicken out if they're not yellow. <laughs> I know. We got all the that, colors of the rainbow there. So how, how safe is air travel now from a terror standpoint? But to find out, a British newspaper reporter put together an easy-to-assemble bomb kit and got it on board a Boeing 757 loaded with passengers. The reporter posed as a baggage handler at England's Birmingham International Airport. He got the job by lying, giving phony references, and phony financial information. <laughs> what was that tape? That was like half an Austin, Robert, uh, Austin Roberts. Austin Powers. Oh, groovy, baby. Right. It's a weird sound of it. <laughs> he, he hid the bomb's parts in his boots earlier this month. They did set off the metal detector, but he got through security by telling the guard his boots had steel toe caps. He assembled the bomb in one of the airplane's lavatories, quoting him, Oh, groovy, baby. Had I been one of Osama bin Laden's terrorists, I could have wiped out 220 passengers. They're now investigating. Those guys, uh, you know, I give them credit. Because, aren't I mean, he's going to jail if he gets caught doing that, right? Yeah, yeah because well, he, he could, comes yeah. in after the fact, he says, I'm a journalist. Mm -hmm. Who's going to believe him then? Wasn't right. there some school kid recently that went through security, either at Dulles or BWI, like to, to, prove, a, to prove a point? I think a lot of people mm -hmm. have done that. And, tested, you know, and I don't mind. The I, I really don't mind that. <laughs> I mean, that's, they're testing it. And, yeah. then, and, and if they get through and it improves it, why not? They mean no real harm. And I don't actually think this guy is going to get in any legal trouble in England. They're actually kind of grateful in a way and embarrassed at the same time. But they are going to look into beefing up security and thanks I, to his report. I keep saying, uh, seeing a lot on, I don't remember what channel it is, whatever the channel is that does during the news, mm -hmm. where the big finger comes down and it's, shame on <laughs> you. I think it's uh, the CBS, uh, uh, CBS 2. Right. And they, they, it's always like the... the the food that you're eating at mm -hmm. the deli that you're eating right. is is tainted. Shame <laughs> on you. Big onion finger. And uh, same thing with this deal. Yeah. The exact same thing. And the kids are going back to school, so school zones are back in effect. Because, oh, 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 excuse me, Buzz. Oh, about the finger of shame? About the finger of shame. Yeah. The report that I saw about uh, the people at the airport, uh -huh. the, the security people, right. it was... The people that are looking for dis uh, dangerous and disturbing things are actually 
stealing from you. Mm -hmm. And then they go to the to the hidden camera shot, which shows the guy going through the bag mm -hmm. and seeing like a nice necklace or something to <laughs> put in his pocket. Oh my and then, god! And then the big finger comes out. Shame <laughs> on you! I gotta see that it's tonight great. on CBS too. <laughs> That's a nice touch. Well, now the kids are going back to school. The school zones are back in effect. So drive carefully through those school zones. You don't want to get hit by a drunk teacher. In Louisville, Kentucky, a fifth grade teacher <laughs> I got hiccups. in the morning, driving her way to her first day of school this week, was pulled over for driving too slowly, weaving, can we lie? Can we fill in 15? Bumping no, into a... Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 all right. No, all right. I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> bumping into a medium strip. Limo. Oh, Mrs. Sorry. Bumped into a medium strip. A breathalyzer test put her at more than twice the legal limit on her way to school that first day of school. She has a court date coming up, but she gets to keep her job. Getting stopped by a cop actually saved her job because she never made it to work that day. Officials say that if she'd reported for work drunk, she would have been fired on the spot. What she does on her own time, they say, is her business. You see, that's an overreaction because she would have been sober by <laughs> fifth period. No, but it's her own time. It's just like what Mr. Spicoli told Mr. Ham. <laughs> but technically, isn't it our time? Yeah, it's our time, absolutely. <laughs> well, that's what Mr. Han said. Yeah. yeah. F, F, F. I watched that whole movie the other night. It's it's that movie holds up after what thirty years? Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, the police. Larry, do you like that movie? Larry King, do you like that movie? Twenty years, yes, Rob. I know it was twenty years. <laughs> Sorry, Larry, Larry King. No, nope. oh, okay, oh. didn't like the movie. That's right. I know it's twenty years, Rob. For what? Rob said it wasn't thirty years; it was twenty years. Sometimes I like to make myself older. Probably yes. <laughs> Absolutely, and so do you, Larry. <laughs> I'm fifty. I'll you beat would. you. Wow. <laughs> He'll be me. I'm looking at a person, I look there, except for my hair gone gray, uh -huh. that I look older there than I feel now. That's what I was people get to your face right now because you are loving your new uh, toy. You are not born. You were made in a toy factory. That's <laughs> <laughs> a new Larry toy. Coming this Christmas. Too great. The, kids, yes. the, ah! the police took a oh, lot boy. of... Police took a lot of things oh boy. from Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch. Oh, God. Michael Jackson tonight. Yes, that's right. Hands down, Michael Jackson. <laughs> from, oh, boy. From the oh, ranch, boy. police oh, took boy. Oh, boy. cameras, videos, computers. Prosecutors wanted to use about 120 of those things as evidence. Jacko's lawyers wanted the judge to throw out most, if not all of them. They said some of the items aren't evidence of anything and that others violate attorney-client privilege. Here's the box score. Yesterday, the judge threw out some 70 items but kept in 39 and said he's still thinking about roughly a dozen others. He's an animal. He should not say he's Jacko. I'm not a Jacko. 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 I'm not a Jacko. Jacko. And it's interesting to compare the headlines on this story in the U.S. to the ones in Europe. In Europe, they're reporting that the judge has thrown out most of the evidence. They feel a lot better about Michael Jackson than we do. Do they really? Yeah. Wow. They're, the way they're ha handling the whole story is completely well, this different. This is Ted Koppel and tonight story, <laughs> Michael Jackson, totally innocent. I love Japan. And we love you too, Michael. Bye. <laughs> Bye. The Germans have been very careful not to make movies about Hitler, much less a film that shows his human side. Hi, this is Wolfgang Juretzek from Germany. Never forget the Don and Mike show. Robert Spielberg production <laughs> is proud to present his human side. Eh? Not showing his human side, that's about to change. The downfall shows Hitler in his bunker ordering non-existent units into battle and declaring the German nation unworthy of him. He drinks wine with... Rob Spivak Productions presents... <laughs> written by Rob Spivak. A Rob Spivak production. Produced by Rob Spivak. Directed by Rob Spivak. Directed by Rob Spivak. A Spivak gate film. Ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's a tour de force. Rob Spivak's first major feature. The human side of Adolf Hitler. In the movie, Hitler drinks wine with his closest advisors while they chat about the best way to kill themselves. Outside are the children and the elderly. Hitler's ordered to pointlessly fight Russian tanks. The movie also shows Hitler being kind to his female staff in those final days, especially to his wife of one day, Ava Braun. Quoting the filmmaker, if you want to understand history, you have to understand the people who make it. Karen Spiewak says... <laughs> Is there any musical romantic subplot? <laughs> Actually, just a bit. Just a little bit. I think we need a dance number. Just one. Right. <laughs>
The and would you get the hat like Ron Howard and Steven Spielberg wear all the time? Well, no, no. You know, you've got to have that base, that baseball cap. The little low, the little low baseball. Yeah. Wear it really low. A beret. A beret. <laughs> a beret. A beret with one of those spikes coming out. Yeah, of it. I, I would dress like a '30s film. <laughs> We're proud to be first to bring you the obvious. A new study says people who have sex are usually in a much better mood than people who don't. The study from economist at Dartmouth also says <laughs> money cannot make you happy, but that more sex can. Really? Uh -huh. The study says happiness from once a week sex is about equal to the happiness from being given fifty thousand dollars. These hopefully hold on, hold on. Wait. If you if you have it every week, say for a year, that they said the happiness that brings you. This is studied by economists. They said that's, sex? that's equal. These are money guys. They're saying that's equal to getting fifty grand. Hey, that's inflation. I mean, that's... Yeah. If it's I mean, done right, yes, it is. Really? <laughs> if mean, it's done right. 50 grand. So getting a check for 50 grand is the equivalent of having sex once a week, once a week for a year. Now, Although in my house, equally likely. <laughs> <laughs> These economists say that since married folks get the most, being married is like getting a $100,000 bonus every year. <laughs> yeah, keep peddling that. Divorce, they say, is like losing 66 grand. <laughs> oh, oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more. <laughs> That's rich. Oh, God. Ah, yeah. The oh, point, okay. say these money guys. Yeah, the point is what? That they ought to be put on a boat. That there are things more important. These are economists saying there are oh. things more important than money. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the city of San Francisco, looking to protect its gay population, is asking for a warning on Viagra. Health officials say oh, a warning. Health officials say a lot of the new sexually transmitted disease patients got the bug on a Viagra-fueled binge with multiple partners and without practicing safe sex. I'm on my eighth Viagra. I'm out of my mind. I can't stop eating them. So since It's been more than four hours, but I refuse to call a doctor. I'm not going to call a doctor. I'm going to go out again. Yeah, and don't forget about Viagra. Mm -hmm. Must be taken orally. Yeah, hey, man. So city officials are asking Uncle Sam's Food and Drug Administration to put a warning on the label of every Viagra package and bottle. Warning leads to happiness. <laughs> the warning would say that Viagra can increase the risk of sexually transmitted disease. And based on those economists, I just made $750,000. <laughs> now, as it turns out, a popular birth control medication also increases the risk of infection for chlamydia and gonorrhea. Hey, hi, Baltimore. <laughs> funny, you should, funny you should mention. Shout out Live 105.7. 7. Baltimore. Thank you, Mike. We got a few Live 105s on on our roster. Depo Provera is used by 30 million women around the world. They get a shot of the hormone every three months. Quoting an expert, it's popular among young women. It can't be found by your mother. The problem was discovered during a study in Baltimore. Kind of exciting right now. We've got the 26th annual Frog Hop. Virginia Baker. <laughs> This woman suffered from chlamydia. Oh, no way. Awful chlamydia. Uh, she's organizer of all... Listen to her. Miss Baker, why did you decide to go ahead and do this? What, what's the point of this? Oh, uh, let's see. Mayor McKeldin, uh, he was our mayor. Do you have a booklet with our history? I'm going to get a frog. There, anyway, there she is, Virginia Baker. Wow, and incidentally, uh, for, for anybody that's ever interviewed on television, uh -huh. that's the first thing you want to say to the reporter. Don't you have a booklet on it? <laughs> Save us a lot of time. Of 265 single women using the contraceptive, 45 of them got chlamydia within a year. Uh, doctors realize that, again, unprotected sex, sex is mostly to blame, but they say there's something about Depo Provera that makes a woman more prone to infection. Ooh. Really? George Michael. <laughs> I don't think oh, he's no, got he's nothing not to do with that. Ew. He's not a woman. Ew. Buzz, we have to break here. What is next? The latest fine product at Walmart. Butt oh. paste. Hold on. Oh, hold on, I knew it. Coming soon to Walmart. And, and hold on, this is... Brand, Wait, well, I didn't hear it. What was brand, it? Uh, brand name. I know I laughed because I... I it's I'm, a brand name. It's, I'm hip to it, what it is. They'll be carrying it at Walmart. It's called Butt Paste. <laughs> butt, butt Paste. Butt Paste. B-U-T-T. P A S Target and Walgreens. Oh, man. Butt paste. Butt paste. Yeah. All right. I'm stuck on that. I'll tell you about it in a second. We'll be right back. This 
is the Don and Mike Show. Oh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. Something wacky this way comes. Right. The Don and Mike Show. Uh, this is tomorrow. We're going to have fun with our uh, megaphone. All right. I mean, we might play that game again uh, that you, people who just won't listen. Yes. We call right. people. And also, you might want to start getting your cheat sheets out because we're less than two weeks away from our on-air uh, NFL fantasy draft. Right. Fantastic. So be aware. I think, as a matter of fact, maybe a week from tomorrow. Okay, a, a week, week from, from tomorrow. tomorrow. That's when we're doing it? Yep. That's right. All right. If you had the number one pick right now, Mike, who would it be? Eli Manning. Yes, I'm not doing it to win. Hold on. I'm doing it to make the season interesting. Where's the tape? Are you retarded? <laughs> Eli Manning, number one overall. Right. It's not a rhetorical question. Are you retarded? Eli, I told you that. I told you that forever. If you had the number one overall pick. Eli Manning. Wow, I hope you get the pick. Mm -hmm. I really do. Eli's coming. But you know, it doesn't matter. But you understand why I'm doing it. I'm doing it just to make it interesting for me. Are you retarded? And get the and re it's not a rhetorical question. Are you retarded? Rekindle my interest in the uh, in the sport. You know, we should. Um, that would be a bad first pick overall. In the, in the in the draft, out of every player available, you take him first. So you say. Yeah. Okay. I'm alone there. I'm alone there. I'm probably. What do you think, Buzz? I think it's a brilliant move. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, ask him wearing his blouse. Last year's Super Bowl. I know. He won the Super Bowl I last know. year. I know he did. Yeah. He has help, though. <laughs> Who does he have help from? Well, I can't tell. <laughs> I mean, it's, isn't it a secret? Hard, hard to say. Is, isn't it your neighbor that yeah, helped you neighbor. out? I know. He told me that. He told me that. A neighbor. It's, what? it's a neighbor. A neighbor. A neighbor. He said, you know what I seriously would take? Mm -hmm. I would take Priest Holmes. Good choice. See? Good choice. Not as out of it as you think. I'm paying attention to this stuff just enough. Who would you do? And I like the way Priest Holmes is talking about his season. I like the way he's kind of saying, you know, I'm going for it. It's like maybe the last hurrah. And he's right. He was thinking about quitting this year. Smash some records this year. What about you, Buzz? My front office people would rather I didn't show my hand at this time. Robbie? I'd probably take the San Diego defense. <laughs> <laughs> That's Damn. funny. Uh, but I do think that maybe as early as tomorrow we should have our... I'll speak to our, com our crooked commissioner. <laughs> right. We should have our draft order drawing because, you know... There's always money to be made off Mike and that. Hey, and I'm bringing the uh, I'm bringing the refreshments. Let's yeah. talk about it tomorrow. Okay, good. We'll, talk, we'll, good. we'll plan the party tomorrow. We'll have it a week from tomorrow. Yay. Excellent. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And me, it would be Mike Vick mm -hmm. first, without fail. Okay, take that's Mike Vick. You think that's a good move? I think that's a very good move. Thanks, Buzz. You know, I'll check with my people. I'm like, sorry, you know. I I respect you in all other respects of life except football. Even not football. Even though you won the fantasy league Super Bowl last year. Uh huh. Because I keep that on more than one occasion. I remember last year during football <laughs> season, and it wasn't only your neighbor that helped you. out. Sometimes it was your wife that helped you out. No, actually, that's not true. Didn't your wife tell you when Kansas City was well? Doing well? She's a big Kansas City fan because that's where she's from. So she was always rooting for their players. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, get ready for our fantasy draft, which oh. is devoid from any any shred of sportsmanship. Yeah, You're it's just right. fun. Just that's great, what's funny about crazy all, fun. all fantasy drafts. Don't be late, went. Mike. The all all fantasy <laughs> drafts. Don't the same be thing. late right. this year. Hey, it's like you know we never really played a game, so you know let's 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 just basically <laughs> not have any sportsmanship. <laughs> just don't be late. All right. Well, I'm going to be here for the show. It's on the show, right? If you're late, you lose your spot. I will not be late, <laughs> and I will never forgive you for that. <laughs> well, yes, it's true. What? Coming soon to Walmart, Target, and Walgreens. Oh, the butt paste thing. That's right. right. Butt paste. That's the name. That's the brand name of the product. <laughs> it's a new product out of Louisiana. Maybe you've seen it advertised on the back of Kim Crosby's NASCAR or on Leno's show, even on Oprah. <laughs> George Boudreau invented this stuff. Finally, it's here. Where's my butt paste? Butt paste. George Boudreau invented this stuff uh, using... It's for diaper rash, mainly, but... He says it's good for many things, that, that in fact, it kept the Louisiana State football team from getting even one case of jock itch last year. How about that? I like mine on wheat toast. 
<laughs> George, is it good for chafing? Yes, it's good for all kinds of skin conditions and irritations. Good. Because I'm going to be playing a lot of golf this week. Thank God the butt paste is finally here at Walmart. Mm, butt paste. George, Buzz, that is the brand name, that's, correct? That's the name to look for on the shelf. And this shot is southern enough for the butt paste. Hey, come on now. We'll get some butt paste on there. Where's my goodies? <laughs> I need... Here's, hello, Walmart. I need my goodies headache powder. Uh-huh. And I need my butt paste. Yeah. And you got it right with the S on the end of powder. Now, goodies headache powder. You, you know how conservative Walmart is, not selling certain magazines and certain CDs. And there's even a product called Horny Goat Weed that at Walmart, it's just called Goat Weed. They take the word horny out of it so as not to offend anybody. But they're going to put butt paste on the shelf. Wow. All right. So how this guy, how George Boudreaux invented this stuff was by mixing a lot of uh, diaper rash medications together. It's been popular with his female drugstore customers. He's a pharmacist and their mothers. It's been popular with them since the 1970s, but until now, he'd never given it a name. Mm -hmm. Now he has. He thinks this is this will catch on. Butt paste. George, <laughs> hope, George hopes to make $12 million from butt paste in the next three years. He says it's also good for chapped lips. Mm. Okay. If you uh, okay, if you jump out of an airplane at eleven thousand five hundred feet and your parachute doesn't open, that's it for you, Pancake City. You're dead. Unless you're Christy McKenzie of Johannesburg, South Africa. Her main chute didn't open. Her reserve chute opened badly with only a couple of lines attached to the silk. So. Christy hurtled earthward at more than 120 miles an hour, wondering what kind of syrup they might use. And then a miracle happened. A miracle in the form of power lines that broke her fall. Except for the hairline fracture to her pelvis, she's fine from 11,500 feet. Wow. And the point of that story is? Christy says she'll jump again. The, the point of that story is what? what uh, yeah, I, sometimes God works in mysterious ways, I guess. What I mean is like that's a happy ending, right? Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I know that doesn't make you feel good. Yeah, hello. I know hello. Feel good that she has to go. Hello, uh, listeners trying to listen to the show to entertain them. What is your story, Buzz? <laughs> Some lady jumps out of the, 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 the airplane. The thing doesn't open. And what's, what's Buzz, the break the glass. Break the glass and give the, the, the phony in. She's okay. saved. All right. Uh, she plans to jump again uh, next time without a shoot. <laughs> no, that's not the no, phony no, Mike. You got to give the real. You want the really phony end? Okay, right, Mike, please. you yeah, do. You, unfortunately, unfortunately, she thought she might survive, uh -huh. but she was tragically killed. And, electric. and then eaten by rats. <laughs> so, <laughs> fire. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you uh, feel good? <laughs> she got on fire. Parachute. Well, she hit the power lines, right. thinking it would break her fall, and spontaneously combusted. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that they could put the fire out with was butt paste. <laughs> <laughs> From Walmart. And then she was eaten by sharks. <laughs> the uh, parachute's been sent back to the company along with the question, hey, what happened? Mm -hmm. In sports, in Kennebunk, Maine, hey. lobster country. Hey. Yeah. You gotta oh. give me a second with hey, that. Hey, what happened? That's there right. Now, in Kennebunk, Maine, lobster country, a woman has won this year's World Lobster Eating Contest. I could probably do this. Sonia Thomas of Alexandria, Virginia, ate over nine and three quarters pounds of lobster meat. That's pretty rich stuff. Have you seen this girl on TV? She's in a lot of eating contests. She was in the Nathan's contest. She's a oh, little, she's skinny, little yeah. skinny thing. A hundred five pounds. She eats like crazy. Wow. Amazingly, that's all she weighs. She downed thirty eight lobsters in twelve minutes. All I got to say to her is, quick, get your resume to WJFK. Each contest. And had a partner crack. She said it was eight and a half pounds? Uh, nine and three quarters, a little over nine and three quarters pounds of lobster meat. Nine and three quarter pounds of lobster meat, and how many lobsters? Uh, 38 lobsters. Okay, when you go out and order those lobsters, that's something to remember. Yeah. It's a little lobster fact there, okay? Uh -huh. yeah. See, nine and three quarters pounds of meat, do the math. 38 lobsters. Mm -hmm. Listen, really, call this station. We are always looking for people for our competitive eating team. <laughs> Yay! Our competitive eating team. It's not, it's like a pickup thing. A lot Wonderful. of the people don't even know that they're on the team. Yeah, we start recruiting right after the fantasy draft. <laughs> Each contestant had a partner cracking the shells and pulling the meat. In her last eating contest in Indiana, she downed nearly eight and a half pounds of pork and beans in two minutes and 47 seconds. Oh. Baby. She also holds the record for hard-boiled eggs. Really? Yeah. Wow. Finally, in the New Orleans suburb of Natchitoches, Victor Tyndale says a robber tried to take his money at Walmart. The demand was made by a man who fired three shots at Victor while Victor was on the toilet in the men's room. Well, so maybe he was just, maybe he just bought some, some butt paste. <laughs> the robber kicked open the stall door and started shooting. Vic says he swung the door, hitting the robber, who then ran away. The robber was a bad shot. Victor didn't get hit by a bullet. So in the end, everything came out all right. Uh, oh, oh, Buzz. I'm Buzz Burbank buzz. on the Don and Mike Show. It's like a groaner. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, if somebody's going to pull a gun on you, that's a pretty good place to be, just yeah. in case. I saw Unforgiven. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> i seen that, too. Remember that? That's where they get the guy. i seen it. Yeah, they kill him in the uh, commode. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. Blood paste. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, thank you to James, the intern, for coming in today. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you get a chance, go out and steal as many copies as you can of The Apprentice, available now on DVD. <laughs> um, and uh, the guy, uh, what, the, the Abracadabra website, what's the... Uh, Paul Bloom. Superstore.com. What is it, Robbie? Abracadabrasuperstore.com. Yeah, the guy who's uh, doing uh, the, the crazy thing with the crazy. money. We'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Good day to you, Good sir. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. Please stay tuned for Rod and Fez. Coming up next in Washington, Baltimore, and Tampa Bay. Adios. Adios. And again, uh, Ron and Fez will come up next. Uh, Fez is really interested in... Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. And you... I'll see you in the UG. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not for Ron here, but that's funny. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's... Oh, boy. Funny. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Captain. Eat a lot. So we meet again. This is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging. This is the Don and Mike Show. I'm as curious about it as anyone else.